Thank you. Good evening. Welcome to the Town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting tonight at 6 p.m. Um, we are Zoom um, capable. And uh, Trevor, can you read the Zoom information? I can, sure. Uh, welcome to the Select Board Board of Health meeting, January 27th, 2021. It is 6, uh, 6 p.m. Um, we're meeting in, normally meeting in the main meeting room, municipal offices at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield. Meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12th, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20. Meetings are typically broadcast on Frontier Community Access Television remote meeting connections are, are listed below. So on our webpage, on the front uh, town hall webpage, you will see a link to you know upcoming meetings. And this meeting is listed there. You can open our agenda, which will have a Zoom link. Um, if you wanna dial in by phone um, the, uh, and you're watching on TV, the phone number is 312-626-6799. The meeting ID would be 911 six zero four one five eight zero and should you need a passcode you can usually just hit pound and, and get in but the passcode is five seven zero zero one two and on there you'll see a meeting uh, a zoom link that you can click on um, so meeting attendees should mute phones um, uh, for landlines or cell phones a star six mute your phone and it also unmute your phone um, so mute those unless you're asking a question so we don't have background noise um, all attendees should wait to be uh, to speak until other participants are finished. So meeting is called to order. Thank you, Trevor. Um, first item on the agenda is the discussion of the planning board candidates. Um, we have four or no, we have three applicants for the planning board. I see Anna Lee. Is there any other planning board persons here to talk to with us about this? I just say, I thought we were going to meet with them on their night, right? Are we doing that still? I, I think yeah. we're supposed to meet February 1st with the planning yeah, board. That's what I thought. Yep. Right. John Waite had asked the select board to have a conversation before the February 1st meeting, and that's what this discussion is supposed to be. Gotcha. Okay. So, what were we supposed to discuss? That we have four candidates or three candidates? I think the process was what they had talked about, the process of how we would go about the selection and then the actual selection would occur on the first. That was my understanding. So if I have it have it correctly, uh, we're just appointing as an interim appointment to fill the seat that would be vacant by, um, I believe the chair, John Waite, who's, who's leaving, I think on the 11th of February. And that appointment would would be effective um, as kind of a filling seat until the election, which election. would be May the is, first. Is that it? Yeah, Monday that's what May. I was. Go ahead, Annalie. Yeah, sorry, I wasn't. Or I don't know. There's been different comments as to whether or not it's till the spring election or if it's for the remainder of his term. No, so our our be... intention is just spring election and have the people decide, um, and that would be. You know, I know that we already notified uh, Barbara Hancock, the uh, clerk, that it would be on the, um, you know, on the on the warrant. We we moved off town meeting, and usually our town meetings and our elections go, you know, together. But um, in this case, our town meeting is going to be moved out further. Hopefully, we can get more vaccine together and all join together again. But um, in the meantime, our election will go forward on that first Monday in in May. Um, oh, so the election will happen prior to the town meeting. That's correct. Yes. Yep. Yes, we're not moving the election. Yep. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so normally what has happened in the past is a planning board looks at um, who's applied and then they discuss it and recommend, you know, uh, to us as a select board and then we discuss that with them. Mm -hmm. um, and we actually are the appointing authority, but I, so I, I don't really know what else is there to discuss. I mean, I, I feel comf fairly comfortable with um, that process. It's just that um, 
I would want to make sure that people are aware that, that we, we do have, we have um, Mark Brennan, Lori Busada, and, and Kathy um, Watroba have sent in letters of interest. Yes, Casey. Um, okay. We also have a letter of interest from Stephen Pistrich. That came in too late for me to print out for you guys. Okay. Yep. All right. And um, I did forward it to members of the planning board. Okay. Okay. And I think Anne, Mary, and Rachel. Okay. We were confused. So there's one question I have for Annalie. We're conf we've received so four letters of interest about this, um, and I was a little confused talking to Jennifer about passing the information out. We have sent it out to the couple members of the board that we had been discussing this with staff. I mean. So I think it makes sense for us to press, push this out, the letters we received, Carolyn, to the entire planning board in a blind carbon copy, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is what I would do. Yeah. But I, I wanted to ask that question here because I don't know if the planning board members have received, and I asked Carolyn this earlier, if the planning board <laughs> members have received any requests or letters of interest directly to them. Right, maybe not to us, right. Yeah. Um, uh uh, David, are you okay with that? If Casey does that, whoops, your your mute is still. No, he's not muted, but he, we can't hear him for some reason. Oh, huh. Thumbs up, thumbs down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thumbs up. Okay. Thumbs up. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. I just um, wanted to make sure we, um, we weren't moving ahead with something um, that you weren't comfortable with. Yes. It does. Make okay, sense. so I will send those vacancy or those appointment requests out to everybody, Annalie, um, yep. tomorrow when I and get back. And the to time, that. the time frame then would be that planning board on the first discusses and then makes recommendations to you, and then you at your subsequent meeting after that vote. Yes. I I don't know where the planning board is on that. That would be my normal. Yeah, Carolyn, that would how be how we would normally handle it, right? It, and I, I so, just, wasn't, I'm, I just wasn't sure. This is Trevor. I just wasn't sure um, if the planning board wanted us to attend their meeting to discuss those options with them, or I mean, if they're okay with you know deliberating amongst themselves, they could let us know, you know, through to Casey that we'll they'll take it under advisement and then recommend to us, and then we'll decide at our next meeting if we move along with that decision or not. And well, sure we the would. reason why I, I, is, is, can David make the meeting on the first? David, are you okay with the um, schedule wise making it on the first? Uh, Sum up if you can. Yeah. Okay, so David can make it on the first. So I think it, if, if Trevor, I know it's another meeting, but yeah. if, if we could just show up Yep. then it will be a lot less back and forth. Um, yeah. Sometimes a, just a quick conversation and we can address it versus, um, you know, them sending us a recommendation and then we'll go back and forth with them. I mean, it could be whatever. Yeah. I think yeah. it's worth just getting together. Yep. Actually, how I had written just in my own calendar, planning board, select board, joint meeting for appointments. So I think yeah. that's what the planning board is counting on. Okay. Okay. Well, well yeah. I, I just think and it makes we do sure have a, yeah yeah just make we sure have an, posted exactly correctly. we have the posting already done okay I just want to make sure it's posted correctly um so then we'll just show up so um all right I, Annalie you thank yeah. you yeah. okay um can you can you hear me now yes, yes. Yep. David that's great hey, you got two different screens we have two Davids <laughs> yeah I gotta I gotta sign off on the computer. Okay. The computer screwed up again. Okay. 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 Should, um, next time you get a chance to bring it in, uh, why don't you drop it off, David? And we can take a look at it. I was going to throw mine out the window the other night. So <laughs> um, it was, it took me almost a half an hour to get on. So it was pretty sad. Um, okay. So or we have a resolution on that then we're going to meet on February 1st at seven o'clock with the planning board. Yep. Okay. And um, Casey, you're going to forward all the letters of interest that we have 
And if the planning board has received any that we haven't seen, can you make sure it gets forwarded to us? Yes. So we have um, the total um, pool. Okay. Right. All right. Thank you. Um, I think we have to um, wait till six thirty on the. We do. Um, um, hearing on the liquor transfer because that's actually a public hearing thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris Curtis is not on, is he? No, and neither is Zach. So okay, Zach, we can. Um, Cherniak is coming as well. But I see um, Mr. Johnson is in. in um, is is the other person here, Casey? Can you tell? Mr. Mono. I, see, I, I don't do see know. Mr. Johnson. Um, I'm, uh, I just want to apologize up front, Mr. Johnson. I, I know you're very distressed and I totally understand. Um, Casey, do you want to go over the tie and bond letter um, for Mr. Johnson? Um, I, I know that, that was that sent out me. later. Yes, I didn't get a chance to read it yet. So um, yeah, if we could take a minute to that go was, over the Well, that was one of the reasons I had asked um, Zach to come to the meeting. Oh, um, you want to wait to talk about that then? Was I that... wanted to wait okay. to talk about that All because right. I wanted Zach to yeah. help address it. He's our construction okay. oversight engineer. Yep. Okay. Um, no, can do other stuff. Yep. All right. Um, I actually see Kim Ruddick on the um, on the high cam. On the, yeah. So, um, Mr. Johnson, if you don't mind waiting, we'll um, hold off a little bit so that we can have our engineer here with us and. And again, I'm, I'm very sorry for everything. Um, I know you're distressed. So we'll work oh, with you, you in a few minutes. Um, so let's uh, move right down. Let's go to the sewer abatement since Kim is on. Um, Trevor and David, did you have a chance to look at the sewer abatement? I, I have briefly, I haven't really had a chance to study it yet. I, I, you know, I was gonna look at it tonight in this meeting and then um, normally, in the years past when we go through abatements that I, I usually take a week or so and just look, uh, try to get some backstory and understand them. I'd love to hear from Kim tonight, you know, what, what's going on. So just instead of making a quick decision, I'd like to hear the information, get some backstory and then, and then maybe That's make a decision. perfectly okay. I did do the math. It does seem to work out, but Kim, why don't you give us a presentation? Yeah. What was happening? Great. Um, well, John Fazio, who's our CFO at Pilot, is also here. So I'm going to let oh, him hey, John. Have a presentation, and I'm also here for questions. Yep. Okay, great. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks, Kim. So, hi, guys. Um, hi. I just moved to Massachusetts uh, this year. I took a job at Pilot Precision as their oh, yeah. in May. Um, and then I ended up moving out here in the very beginning of August. And so I I'm new to the area, but. Uh, um, at first, um, you know, some of the accounting uh, was a little bit, as I came on, the, the prior CFO had left and, uh, and all the rest of the accounting team had kind of gone before her. And so um, I kind of had my hands full for a little bit, just trying to get on kind of top of everything. Mm -hmm. Um, it was weird for me not to see a, a water or a sewer bill on a regular monthly basis. It was just what I was used to at home. And so then when, when I finally saw our bill that <clears throat> came in, um, I, I was just, I, I was shocked at first. I, I thought that there had been something going on. So I went back and looked through all the bills that we'd got. And obviously we're a new facility there. Right. Just a couple of years old. A couple of years ago, we had construction um, finishing in 2019. And then in the fall of 2019, we installed like 58,000 square feet of lawn um, on the side of the building where it's plotted to be able to be um, another building or the other second half of the building to go there. But until then, Eric wanted it to look nice. So he put like 58,000 square feet of sod in um, and he put a well in to be able to water it with but the well never worked. Um, I was here in May out there trying to get, help them get the sprinkling system going. And no matter what we did, the well just kept plugging up and we could never get water out of it. So they had to go back to watering from the city. Um, and so they watered from the city all summer. And I know that we used more water than normally would have, but it was all outdoor irrigation for the sod. Um, and I think it's pretty evident by the bills. If you just go back and look 
that, you know, what we use during the winter, we had like, you know, 50, three, yeah, 58, 300 50, thousand gallons or something. Yeah. And then to go from that to 1.8 million gallons, that, I mean, it just, it, it seemed very, very evident that there was something going wrong there. So I actually don't know what the right approach is as far as what to ask for to try to prevent this in the future. Um, I, I, you know, recommendation was maybe we could get a second meter, one that's just. Mm -hmm. for. I was going to say we usually recommend if this is going to be a long term situation, we actually recommend a, um, a second meter. But what we do is it's usually um, capped at 125% of your winter well, that, usage. So Karen, that's typically for, for uh, residential use, and we don't abate for industrial. However, this obviously is a unique situation, and we know that you know 1.8 million million gallons didn't go down the sewer. Um, right. So I think you know part of this is that <clears throat> I think we just need to look at our regulations a bit and and, and kind of uh, get a policy together about this situation. And um, I think there are others that have have you know farmers and that kind of thing who who put water on their crops during the year from you know, not from a well like you were trying to do. Yeah. Um, and that's why I was thinking if we had, you know, a week or something or so, or maybe before the next meeting, we could gather this information today, try to come up with a policy um, and make sure that it, um, that it, it's fa fair to the business owners and, and the sewer system. But uh, typically for residentials is what Carolyn was saying that right. um, residences don't they only pay 125% over their winter bill because we know a lot of people wash their car and fill the swimming pool and water the garden, that kind of thing. So, and we know that usage is a little bit more, but, you know, so we just cap it at 125% of their usage sure. for the winter. So we'd have to decide, you know, is that the policy for businesses as well? And or When I um, did the math, what, um, even though the, the sewer rates went up to 14, a little over $14, um, the 72 Eight, which is what you had before, um, 72,000 um, was what would have been 125%. So your sewer bill is, is just over $1,000. And then you add in your connection fee, service fee. So it'd be like $1,152 is what um, the math that I came up with. So um, if we have one other sewer abatement. So if, if Trevor, if you wanted to put off the final vote until um, our next meeting, that's fine with me, but um, I, I would be in support of, um, you know, rebating money that obviously was spent on lawn. Yeah, I, I just want to talk to Barb about it as well. Go ahead, Casey. Your thoughts. Um, so the deadline for the billing has gone past. It was Friday and they're incurring demand fees, uh, interest and demand. So I would ask the board to consider that um, because oh. again, each each day you accrue interest and interest on that bill. Um, yeah. There is an anomaly here. It's, if you look, I did a quick spreadsheet for myself just because I couldn't, I couldn't see it the way I needed to see it. So their first bill was $720,000, 20,000 gallons ish. And then the second bill, like like John said, was 58,000, I think it was 300 gallons. And then we jump up to this 1 million. Now that's the only history we have. This is a completely new business. So it makes it difficult to go back and do a comparison. The other sewer abatement, I was able to look and see what the fluctuation was. In this case, there isn't as much. So what Carolyn said about, you know, the change in the sewer rate and the only number that we really have that seems like a reasonable one is the 58.3 per gallon. Right. That, that sort of makes more sense to me because we really don't have that tracking method that we would have with an ex existing user. However, I did hear the board say at the last meeting when we discussed sewers that generally you ask people that are going to be doing irrigation to put in a separate meter and that would be a separate water meter, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. yeah. I just yeah. wanted to clear that up because I knew I, John and I had talked about yeah. that. Yeah. 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 So, um, so I just want to bring that up because it, it well, will affect well, demand on this. And the, and and the other, yes. And the other well, thing. then I, I mean, I don't have a problem 
Trevor. Well, let me just say here, the other issue is that as we deal with, with Frontier, you know, we don't, as a town, um, and John might not know this, we, we don't read the meters. So we t uh, the water department reads the meters, and we just have a policy of basing our sewer rates off the water. water usage. Yep. And then we, and, you know, we come up with a formula using that. It's our, our best kind of way to do it. Um, so, um so we have nobody to come out and read the meter and decide between the two. What we do with, with uh, say, the high school who has big athletic fields, they have a separate meter once a year um, on the same day every year. They snap a photo of the meter and send it in to us. And then, and then we have the ability to kind of go, okay, you use this much in the irrigation and we subtract that from the total usage in. So it's a little more, you know, it's, it's creating work on our end to try and figure out, you know, how many people have meters out there and what we're going to, so that was what I meant about kind of making sure we had a policy that was accurate and, um, right. and that you would, well, we don't. Like you're right. Sending but, that in. So um, I mean, it is the issue of just, uh, you know, uh, abating the interest on it. I mean, I, I'm not sure what the real rush. I don't is. think we can. The problem is we can't uh, legally, we can't um, abate the interest. Mm -hmm. So, or the demand um, fee. Yes. Fee. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure. This is you just can only point. abate to the billing itself. Right. So, um, and this is a giant, giant bill. I mean, this is- And it's a giant bill, but it's a complete anomaly. Yes. Like, so, I looked at it three times. So here, here's the, here, I know. the other issue is that Frontier had the huge anomaly. Uh, um, Memorial Field had a huge anomaly. Everybody put on like, a million eight gallons of water onto their fields this year. That's just something to talk about in itself. Like how much water we're using in town. That's a ton of water. Frontier, mm -hmm. they did 1.8. You know, we've got 1.8 here. We have a massive amount. And, and I know it was a dry year. So Kevin, you want to speak to that a little bit? Yeah, if I could. Um, I, I think, you know, to be fair to, uh, to pilot um, the 58,000, would be a reasonable number at this point to, mm -hmm. to utilize um, an abatement. And again, this is just my recommendation. Uh, abatement of that would be um, a one time under the understanding that they do install a water meter. If they don't install a water meter, this will be a one time only. Uh, that's that's right. just my recommendation. No, I agree with that. Yeah, that makes sense. And then just, and then for us to set that policy of, okay, so how do we get that reading? Who, who's responsible? What day does it come in? I think it'd be important. Correct. Yeah, it's going to take a little bit of um, going back and forth with the water department to try and figure out what's the who, the when, the how, what, you know, of when they're right. going to be released. So, and, um, then that way we're getting accurate numbers between the two. That, that would be my recommendation. Do you, Carolyn, were you talking of aiding 120, oh, no more than 125% as we do for residents? Right. I, I was going to use the same. Um, to be fair. Uh, to be fair, because that has been, you know, that's a residential policy. Mm -hmm. And, um, and there is, you know, potentially there is more, a little bit more use during the summer, even if it is a business, but I, I felt comfortable doing the 120% $1,100 bill is certainly more reasonable mm -hmm. than 26,000. Yeah. And that yeah. is not fair to our businesses. Our business is already having a hard time. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we know already know we know that the water didn't go right. down to the sewer. Exactly, so, there were thirty employees, so it's not right. Right. So, so it would be abating a hundred. Explain to me the hundred twenty-five percent thing because I'm confused. So you do you multiply the fifty-eight thousand three hundred times by one point two five, yeah. and, and you get seventy-two. I, I I'm not sure if I wrote this down somewhere. Oh, you get seventy-two thousand eight hundred and some odd um, gallons, okay? And then you multiply it by the sewer rate, which is 14, wherever it is, 14 something. Yep, and 1436 um, per thousand. Mm -hmm. Right, and then it's, so you get a little over a thousand dollars and then you add in the um, search fee. So it's about $1,100 bill versus yep. the 26,000. Right. For okay. almost 26,000. I'm just so, going to need to know um, by tomorrow so I can tell Sarah if you guys do vote this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm voting 100. And I'm, I mean, I make a motion. Well, where's Dave? Dave, are you okay with this? 
Well, yeah, I'm okay with that. As long as we totally understand that this is for irrigation and they're not using water cooling on any of their equipment. And they aren't. I, they have no process yeah. I think, in there for water, right? Is that right? Yeah. I mean, and this would be a one-time I mean, correction. Correct. There's, there's right. no, no processes that use water in the building. Right. Okay. So, and I so think maybe that should, be, the post should say that. I'm, I'm happy to put in a second meter. I, when I called the first time to ask about it, I got told, I kind of got a little bit of a runaround. Is there, is there a process for me to get a second meter? Well, it would be with the water department and not the town because the water district in our town are two different entities. Um, okay. They're, they are, they're actually their own town. <laughs> kind yeah. of. So, um, like essentially like a fire district is the same so um yeah so yeah you would want to get in touch with the water department and request that and then i think in the meantime um uh, work with casey we'll come up with a way that you could you know um send us that photo on say october 1st every year october 30th every year so then we could just compare each year we know how much irrigation went on the lawn at yeah. first and we subtract that from how much went into the building that sounds great yeah, because the water department will only read one read one meter. You'll have to read the other one and get it to us, kind of thing. Okay, all right. I, I'm absolutely willing to do that. That'd be great. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Okay. Right. Can we want to look at um, Bobby Kelly's at the same time? Um, could are you could I pause? Separate votes? Uh, could I pause uh, you guys? Yes. For one sec. Tim. Tim has his hand up. Tim. Oh. Okay, Tim. Question, Tim. All right. Um, Tim Elchi, 330 Greenfield Road. I just wanted to ask um, if um, pilot installs the second meter and it's determined next year that this 125% doesn't actually reflect what into the, went into the sewer, do you make an adjustment at that point? So in other words, the irrigation and the, the other meter show that they actually did use a lot of water and it did go into the sewer. So would you no, make an adjustment? No, if it goes into the- Is this just a- If it goes into the- if it went into the sewer, they're going to pay. Right. So that, I was yeah. just asking, you know. Oh yeah, no, we wouldn't. We wouldn't go backwards. It it, it would have to be just a one time. Just program. going forward. Yeah, that's yeah. all. I just wanted to right. clarify. Yeah. No, that's a good yeah. point. Thank you. Sure. Um. Well, I was going to um. Look at uh, Poppy Kelly's on the Yesmans well, farm. A it was. And vote uh, on this one? Do you want to make a motion and vote on this one first? Okay. You want to vote on them separately? That's yeah. fine. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I make should. a motion. I make a motion that um, we uh, abate pilot precision a hundred uh, or cap pilot precision's bill and abate uh, the balance um, based on. Oh, I can't find the actual bill now. Oh, I'm sorry. I just had it. Uh, what was it? Thirty-eight thousand or something? Thirty-eight thousand gallons. Twenty-five. 25, 8, yeah, 6, uh, 58. Okay. Oh. But it's, oh, no. You would, Sorry. You would I was, oh, 58. It was based on 58,000. So we're going to cap it at 125% of 58,300. And abate the remainder and abate yeah. the difference? Yeah, yeah. abate the, the difference of 25 to $25,867.58. And their connection fees, you know, would yeah, still you add the connection out. fee, and yeah, somebody just has to clean up the math. Mm -hmm. Do that. And it, it, I mean, do we know how much the interest and in the other fees are that are accruing? I don't know. Um, but if Sarah we vote today, we can pay tomorrow, right? And that would be the end of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would just need the board to sign or authorize maybe Trevor to sign that abatement on behalf of the board so that we can get the paperwork across the hall. I could do that. Um, okay. Yeah, can you, or I can come down because oh, yeah. Casey, you left, sure. you left something off for me to- Yeah, to we, you may have a lot of things to sign. So what right. you could do is just, if you guys could come in tomorrow and sign, I'll, I'll then, sign it, it then their payment would work. Yeah. Yeah, okay. 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 Perfect, thank you. Okay. okay. Um, did I, Trevor, you second that or Dave? Yeah, uh, yes, I'll second that motion. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Okay. 
Um, the next, we had one from the yeah, Yaswinski Farm um, on um, North Main Street. And that was the same thing. They used it for their... Um, so that one's a little t uh, tougher because you've got usage of 23,000, 22,000, 96,000, 113,000, 30,000, 126,000. It's kind of all over the place. Do you want to speak to that? It is. Well, it's, I looked back and, and I had given you guys a bit of a history document. So I took that history document like I did with Pilot. And I basically looked at it to see what the fluctuation was. And so from 2018 to 2020, there's specific areas where you see significant fluctuation. And that looks like, for the most part, it's the, like it's the billing, the summer billing except for one, which was a winter billing of 96,500, and that was billed out 5-1-2019. Um, mm -hmm. So, but there's, there's at least three billings in the last two years where it's been over $1,200. Um, and then you see the flip where it's under 500. So I don't know what that means in terms of the gallons used or if there's a problem with the system, but I do see that there's a pattern and yet it's broken at least one point, at one point. Do they have two meters there? No. No, they don't. They don't meter the, the what they use for the farm. But, you know, one of the things that did happen is I think one of the reasons you're getting the higher readings in the winter there is that's when they put in the greenhouse. Okay. Uh, I'm not 100% positive, but I know it went up about that time. And they would have been watering a lot to get ready for the spring planting. Yeah. I so think maybe we were. should have them do another meter, like we just asked Pilot to do. Oh no, I'm I'm so we, I think we we need to suggest that they have another meter as well. Yeah. We need a policy here because this is going to just open up a huge can of worms for everybody. It is going to open a huge can of worms. Yeah. I don't know if we've seen these before. We have never like, I have no background. Before. Sorry. The background I know of in my time here is we've never abated anything other than like a, a break in the pipe you know people have to know that they have to do it now i want to support the farmers and i think there needs to be a a policy in our businesses there needs to be a policy made but there isn't one right now so it's hard to abate so, in there. yeah it's hard to abate without a policy and there's also no guidance document for me to look at to really figure out what i need to get you guys for information or what i need to tell somebody who's requesting an abatement and you know, the collector takes calls about the money itself, but the policy piece comes to us. So right. I think that's a deficiency that we need to correct. I just don't quite know where to start. Now, we had had worked on some sewer regulations, but a policy around dealing with the bills, I think should we should get together as soon as we can. And I think maybe we could ask Justin or Dave to help us with that, right, yeah. Trevor? Yeah, yes, absolutely, yeah. And I think- um... But it looks like it's happened in more than one area, like. For, for more than one person in the last year. We have a lot this, of farmers, you know, I, I would, you know, Galinsky's had, had approached us a couple of years ago. We have not abated them. Well, right. we did. So I, and that's no, the question. we did. And we asked them to put in a second meter and I think they did. We didn't abate them and I don't think they ever put in another meter. They pay every year. Really? Yes. Oh. So uh, that's what I'm saying. It's, uh, it's hard. I, I, I have a hard time picking and choosing between farmers. And I just feel like it needs to be a, it really needs to be a policy thought out and done right. Um, I'm not opposed to it at all. I just, I just to do it right now. Yeah. I feel uncomfortable about it without like thinking about it for a couple of weeks and going, okay, this well, I think, I mean, if you want to, yeah, if you want to wait on this one, um, so we have a policy. For Same the deal, though. It's the demand situation. Yeah. It's the interest oh. and demand situation. It's, it's it's not a huge amount of money, though. I mean, we're not talking 25000 so. No, it's, it's, but that's, that's going to be their question. So that's the other thing. Is, I, mean, it, I looked on the bill, and I can't see where it says you have to pay your bill before you do. Get oh, yes. No, it does. It does. Absolutely. You must pay your bill, period. Before you even think about getting an abatement. So, um, like, pilot should pay their bill before they get an abatement. Right. right. And so that's why they need to know so that they can walk the check down tomorrow. Right. 
I know. Um, so they, that's what they're saying. It's uh, we're doing it before the you know they always have to pay their bills, and then we always we say, okay, we found an issue, a broken pipe, but this problem, that problem, right? Uh, and we find a legitimate reason to do this to you, but not everybody else in town, and so um, and so it really needs to be accurate and um, and thought out a little bit. I just but but they definitely need to pay their bill ahead of time. I mean, they're just yeah. It says right. I think it says right on the thing, right? Well, that's uh, what I was looking for. The the Yaswinski bill, or you know, Poppy's bill. Yep. That looks like it has been paid. Right. I think, and most times they are. I think this, the pilot was so big, they were like, "Wait a minute, what's going on?" Yeah. Yeah. But I think, yeah, if if they've paid, uh, that that's great. Yeah, I see paid confirmation on the bottom. So yeah. So there shouldn't so, be any interest or demands on that. No interest. One. Yep. That'd be good. So did you want to hold off on the abatement and just just for, until next try to develop week. something? Yes, I, I think it would be fair fairest to Barb in the collection office and other residents. Um, you know, I, I'm talking businesses. I'm not interested in everybody in town putting in a meter because they water their lawn. We've had this discussion for five years. That's not happening. If you want to, you know, you know that you're already getting abated only 125 percent over your bill already. So right. if, if you want to run your meter past November or past October, that be my guess, but you'll have to pay, you know, everybody is aware that you've got to pay the bill. Um, Cause we don't, we don't have any, any mechanism in place. I mean, the amount of money we would have to then increase our sewer rates to pay somebody to drive around and check everybody's meter. Right. You're going to pay more that way than you are, you are this system. So um I thought long and hard about this because I've been asked multiple times by different residents of different areas of town to, you know, to abate our bill because it goes in, you know, goes on the lawn. And while I understand that, we just don't have a better system at the moment. Um, so you, you can't be running your irrigation. It's, and I understand that's different with a farm or a business entity that, you know, uses it to produce, you know, crops. And that so that's thing. where I was asking, are yeah. we talking about coming up with some sort of a business policy or an agricultural business yes. policy or exactly. because I, I think we if if that's the case then I think it needs to encompass any business in town and it so, has to have clear lines like that photo is not our responsibility if we don't have it by the time the bills go out we're not going backwards to to chase any abatements they have to put it in there has to be responsibility on their end if they're going to be doing you know putting a separate meter in and letting us know for a business or for a farm. Um, I, I worry, you know, we can't do it for every resident in town. It just isn't gonna happen. I don't, I don't We're putting a policy together. Yeah. Um, we probably are gonna need to develop that language and do some work on it, but we yeah. also need a deadline. Is there, yeah. it says 30 days, I thought. Didn't 30 it? days for what? Abatement deadlines. You can only request abatement for 30 days uh, I don't recall. I, I, that's what, okay. So that's just a side question. I'm shutting up yeah. now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we can check that out. No. Um, but I do want to help. I mean, I, I completely understand the yeah. question and why they asked for the abatement. I think we can come up with some help there. Uh, I just want to make sure it's done correctly. So do you think, um, Casey, you can find some language somewhere? I do. I think I can. And I would need to run it by you guys. Yep. Yeah. I, I would like to see it before our next meeting so we can actually vote on the right. abatement for the next meeting. Because that, that'd otherwise, be that'd be great. you know, you're, yeah, you're, you're dragging, dragging it down the road. Yeah, no, yeah, I get dragging it. it well, I will way. say this. We may need, if we're going to do a policy like that, I would just like to check and make sure we don't have any hearing requirement, hearing notification requirement. Mm hmm yeah, but what I can say is we can do the draft policy. We can technically agree to it and continue refining it, but we can base the abatement on a policy. Okay. Because, you know, we're not prepared to come up with, you know, language at this moment. Right. But I think okay. we, can, we can come up with something and, and make sure it's fair to yep. the users. I mean, and just so everybody realizes, we abate, right? <laughs> It, that's less money we have to run our sewer system. And guess what? We're doing $1,900 exactly. worth of sewer work just on one plant. So it all comes around full circle anyways. I just, you know, 
it's just got to be fair to everybody. Um, yeah, well, you can't you can't penalize people that are more. Of course not. Of course not. But it just you know when we don't have the money, it, we still need to raise it to do all the work. So yeah, one way or yeah. the other, everyone has to pay. But it should be fair to everybody. Yeah. yeah. And I think we can get there. I'm, I'm sure. So. Okay. So let's put this on the agenda for next um, our next meeting, Casey. Okay. Which is um, February 10th. And, and can you just can you just let Poppy know about this? Okay, so that she doesn't wonder about it. Okay, um, so I think we can go back. We're we're now um, at um, past our six thirty hearing for the liquor license. So um, everyone, Dave, are you okay with the abatement issues and stuff? Yes, I am. Okay. So let's move back to um, the liquor license transfer. Trevor, can you read that, please? Sure. Yep. Notice of public hearing. In accordance with the Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 138, the Select Board, acting as the local licensing authority for the town of Deerfield, hereby provides notice that they will hold a public hearing Wednesday, January 27th, 2021, at 6.30 p.m. in the main meeting room at Deerfield Municipal Offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass, 01373, on the application of H&M Brothers, Inc., DBA Deerfield Convenience Store for transfer of annual wine and malt beverages off-premise liquor license, change of manager and pledge of license, ABCC license number 88867-PK-0267, the premises is located at 513 Greenfield Road, Deerfield, Mass, 01342. Verbal comments will be accepted at the hearing. And obviously, we're not meeting at the 8, at the, uh, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield. We're meeting online with all the, um, all the same um, appliances from the Mass General, you know, Mass, um, Massachusetts Governor's change of order. Um, the dial-in number, of course, everybody's on here already, but it's 312-626-6799. Uh, uh, the meeting ID is 911-604-1580. And should you need the passcode, it's 570012. For anybody listening that wants to call in and have comments. Okay, so um, I see Christy's on. Christy, do you wanna give Hi. us a presentation? Hi. Yeah, can you hear me okay? I, yes, we can. My client's yeah. with me here in the conference room, and then the Welcome. other, Rakesh Parikh, is hey, going to be the, Rakesh. he's the manager, the liquor license manager. Okay. So um, my clients okay. are buying the, uh, the, the store from the current owner. I think the current owner's retiring. Okay. And they're basically going to operate pretty much the same way. I think they're going to probably add some new things and rearrange you know, the store a little bit, make some improvements to it. Mm -hmm. um, Baron Patel uh, is also a part owner of Mox Chip and Ale in Northampton. So he's got a lot of experience um, in that. And, and uh, both of these men are, are TIP certified. I, I emailed the TIP certification yes, to Pat today. Yes, I saw that. Thank today. you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I guess my question is, do you have any questions on the, on the uh, application? Well, my concern always is the uh, tips training and how, and just the statement that we're very, very serious about um, compliance with um, uh, our rules in town. So um, Dave or Trevor, do you have any questions? Yeah, I would just echo that. I appreciate the tips training. We, um, you know, we do take very seriously um, and we'll check, you know, often without notice. Yeah. Um, you know, people coming in the store and we, we're obviously in an area where there's some, some schools and um, I just think it's, yeah, very important to just please, please pay attention to that um, requirement. And uh, other than that, no, I, I don't, I appreciate the, the tips uh, certifications. Um, I've looked at the application. I don't, I don't have any questions. I, I thank you for coming to Deerfield for your business. Uh Dave, do you have any questions? Uh, no, I'll just echo what you and uh, Trevor had said. Um, you know, it's they appear to have plenty of experience. Um, the application looks like it's all in order to me. Um, and I think, you know, it's... I guess 
Yeah. It looks complete. So, um, police, did Chief Pachurk have any questions or anybody? Yeah, was there anything from Casey? Did you hear from John at all? I didn't. Okay. Um, okay. But honestly, this is the first one I've worked in the office doing since. 2016 yep. so i don't know if there's a i don't know if there was something that maybe pat should have reminded me to do to send this to him um it looks like so it's complete just based yeah, on the application is complete i don't know if there were any problems i haven't been aware made aware of anything i don't i don't think so i mean i haven't heard anything so um then i will make a motion to close the hearing uh, second that motion, Trevor McDaniel. Um, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Okay, I also make a motion to transfer, to support the transfer of um, the liquor license as presented. And uh, let's see, yes. Um, that one quick second. Right. right. And change of manager and pledge yep. of license. Yep. yep. So I'll second that motion, Trevor McDaniel. Is there any other discussion? No. Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Thank you, Christy. Thank you so yeah, much. Really nice, always nice to do business in Deerfield. Thank you. Thanks a lot. We'd love to have you in. Nice, see, nice seeing you. Keep wearing your mask and be safe. Yes, yes. we will. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Good luck to you all. Okay, um, next item on the agenda um, is, um, I notice Kevin is here, is, um, is I don't see uh, Chris Curtis. Can we, I, Mr. Johnson and Mr. Mono, Mono has been, been on here for a while, so can we just jump to them, Casey? Well, we have them. We have this conversation scheduled for seven thirty. Yeah. Because okay. we had other things that we had to deal with, so yeah. I can ask Zach if he can hop on, and Chris. But Chris was the reason we had to do that is we had so many things that we knew were going to be or could be All discussion right. issues. So, so I'm going to send Zach an email right now. All right. Yeah. Tell him that um, Mr. Johnson I know has been on since the very beginning. So. Um, All right. I know. Hey, Casey, conveniently, I just uh, joined. Oh, Zach. Hi. Hi, Zach. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> sure. I was literally texting you. Yep. Uh, I just happened to get on a little early. How can I help? Thank you, Zach. Um, well, I, I think we, why don't we start with, um, Kevin was going to do a quick update on um, Kelleher Drive, what's happening on the culvert. And then, um, Zach, you can, I saw a copy of the letter that you just did this afternoon in support of um, Mr. Johnson and, and uh, um, other related um, neighbors. So why don't we start there? Kevin? Is Kevin there? Oh, he was there. Yeah, I'm yeah. almost there. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Kevin. Okay, sorry, I'm just trying to, there we go. Okay. All right, so basically, um, as of today, uh, the contractor, um, or excuse me, as of yesterday, the contractor pulled the, pulled the bag to allow the stream to flow through. Um, the last footing in culvert should be delivered by 2-9. Uh, with that thought, the culvert should be installed, uh, com should be complete installed, backfilled, filling the inside of culvert with natural materials by the 12th. And then they'll return uh, according to the schedule that I saw sometime in March to restore landscaping guardrails, um, environmental, any other issues that may be at that point in time. Um, okay. Obviously, this is what we've been told. Um, and you know, as well as I do, everything has the opportunity to change. Yeah. Kevin, do you know when they, uh, when the asphalt plants typically open up? Um, it depends really depends the on the weather. Yeah. Um, I mean, they'll, you know, if, if let me put it this way. As soon as they can open continually yep. and, and make money, then yep. they're going to open. So okay. it really, it's, it's weather dependent because yep. obviously if they're not making asphalt now, we're relying upon coal patch. I hate coal patch. Oh yeah, no. Um, no. And so the first opportunity that they have the to be contract. able to start producing, 
they will start producing in in mass but if it's only yeah. just a couple of small because the problem is 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 you used to be able to go to a couple different places to pick up some hot patch but yeah not um, much anymore it's, yeah it's just not there now Palmer and Palmer and so, the other. kevin they are aware and zach they are aware that there is a penalty involved here correct and they did they acknowledge it when you, in the discussion i mean i don't want this to be a shock i mean we verbally told them uh you know, liquidated damages are one of those things that are often used as a threat. Um, it's in the contract for the reason of exactly the you know position we're in now. Um, so the clock is ticking. We've made them aware of it. Um, we sent back a change order review letter today that mentioned it again as well. Okay. Um, so, you know, we're doing everything we can to motivate these folks to continue to work and continue to get the job done. Um, there may be some options, uh, you know, having them come back in March and, and a delay time you know a period between you know when they finish most of the work to coming back to restore you know maybe there's other options with that you know a different contractor or somebody that's going to be a uh, more responsive in the springtime but um that is a conversation to have yeah i think it would be actually worse to try to switch out the engineering i mean the, the contractor at this point so mm -hmm. um you know, would not i would not recommend that no uh, i don't i mean we're, we're too close as yeah. Really, I know we are. And again, um, I know it's been very stressful for the neighbors. So could you just, I saw the letter that um, you sent out later this afternoon. Could you just describe it a little bit, Zach? Because um, normally we would take the complaint letters of damage and forward it to the um, bond holder, you know, it's insurance coverage. Sure. So what you've done, Zach, is allow or support the letters of damage um, that we would make sure that your letter gets along with the letters of complaint. Yeah, absolutely. For the, can I share the letter on screen right now? Yes, sure. yes, yes. Sure. Cause I don't think the neighbors have seen it. Okay. Yeah, it just came in late this afternoon. I'll zoom in a little there. Can people see that letter? Yes. Yes. Yep. Okay, great. I guess I'll talk while people read it. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, you know, we've received two letters, you know, we the town, um, you know, there was one letter, uh, you know, with an, uh, a list of complaints uh, regarding the, the noise and the, and the construction activities that have been, you know, taking place out there, um, understandably so. Uh, and then the second letter was, um, you know, a claim for Mr. Johnson and talking about um, damages uh more narrative of the damages not a dollar amount um and that you know there's an open insurance claim on his end etc so i i'm glad you guys had me uh attend the meeting tonight i can explain how that works so when the town hires these contractors um in the contract there's provisions for you know a certain amount of insurance they have to carry the type of insurance um and there's there's a language in the contract that defines you know that they can't they can't cause you know damages to private property and if things happen they need to fix it so the proper avenue here is kind of what we did today we took the claim uh notified the contractor of the claim uh suggested they either you know meet with with the uh you know person who's, who has the claim and talk about what the issue is um, and if there's no resolution there immediately then um you know it goes off to the their insurance companies and the insurance companies figure out how to um you know, correct those damages related to construction. So the easy ones are the the stuff outside the property, right? So, you know, Ty and Bond and, and the town is obviously um, heavily involved with observing the work. Um, we know the damages that have occurred to private property, to town property, all that stuff is part of the restoration of the job at the end of the day. So, you know, a, a little patience, um, you know, be appreciated to recognize that the job is dragged out a little bit um, for various reasons. But at the end of the day, we do intend to make sure that the site gets restored to uh, equal or better than what it was before. And I'd be happy to attain, uh, um, attend a site visit, uh, you know, at the time where we think stuff is restored and make sure that it's uh, up to par with, with uh, whoever's property uh, was damaged. The interior stuff's a little different story. That stuff should be, um, you know, through the contractor and through their insurance. Uh, but that's in place to specifically deal with issues like that. Normally what would happen again is it's a homeowner's claim and the homeowner's policy would pay for restoration. And then the homeowner's uh, insurance company 
would lay a claim against the insurance of the contractors. So it's between the insurance company um, and they, um, I mean, obviously we're gonna support and document um, that uh, things did happen, um, but the insurance companies actually go after each other and that's how it's resolved. So um, it's not, uh, I mean, we're, we'll, Zach will help, Kevin will help. We'll make sure um, that nobody um, is left um, holding, you know, these awful damages without support. I don't know how Trevor and Dave feel, but I'm I've, I'm very sorry at that you're so distressed. Well, thank you. Um, I guess, am I muted or can you hear me? We can. No, nope, I can hear you, Mr. Johnson. Okay, I, I I wanted to preface this by saying I'm I'm not feeling adversarial at all. I'm very alarmed because I have so very much damage, and. Um, what I did, and, and, and um, when they removed about 80% of their equipment by the end of the day yesterday, it was the very first time um, in weeks that my house has not been vibrating. I didn't have these problems until they chose to smash out the asphalt and to smash out the prior, the prior culvert. The, the early construction was characterized by um, malfunctioning pumps that screeched and changed RPM all night long around the clock. That was horrific for about a month, but it wasn't until they chose not to cut the asphalt out, but to smash it out with the tines of the backhoe that literally my house shook like, like there was an earthquake. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned in my letter yesterday, I've lived here since the renovations were done across the street at Frontier and nothing like that happened during the Frontier renovations. Right. This morning was the very first time since they smashed out the, the road and took the old culvert out, that my house has not been vibrating. And if, if I may, I, I took a video yesterday at noon. Mm -hmm. Do you have a moment to watch that? Sure. sure. Um, uh, Zach, could you take down the letter so that we, if Mr. Johnson could share? Thank okay. You for that. And again, I regret that I, you know, I didn't document when they, the earthquake like from months ago, but, um, this was at my home yesterday. Can you hear it? A little bit. Yeah, it's, it's hard over the, and, over the computer. But it's it's I, okay, I, um, sir. I, I, honestly, we... we we're not doubting you how awful I, it is. You, I read your letter. I have okay, to say. Okay, thank you. I mean, my, my concern and the reason they're keep, as I mentioned yesterday, the reason they're keeping the claim open is because by the end of the day yesterday, I had more damage. Um, when the adjuster came in um, prior to his bringing in the structural engineer, his, his initial statement says, type of loss, foundation damage. So the, the house rocked enough that I have some pretty substantial damage. Um, and I, you know, I appreciate, I appreciate your advocacy because <laughs> when I spoke to the insurance people, they said, well, it's not clear how much the homeowners is, is gonna actually cover, if anything at all. And I said, well, then do you go after the insurance of the, of the construction people? Well, we don't know that yet, we won't know until we see what all the damage is. So I've been kind of in limbo with this whole thing mm -hmm. as the damage has been cumulative. Yeah. And, and I'm, my so concern, and, I, and I'm very grateful too that you're, you know, for your letter and your advocacy because my concern was that people were just gonna keep passing the ball. Uh, uh, yeah, David, that's not the case. The, you know, the the, uh, the insurance that's in place, you know, we, we require them to carry a hefty, hefty amount of insurance. They have the policies in place to pay for these types of damages. You know, the one thing that happens is they'll probably meet you on site. Uh, you might get some feedback from the contractor that's, you know, quite bluntly, oh, we didn't cause this. We didn't do that. At that point, you know, your insurance company goes to their insurance company, the professionals come out and they, they do a more assessment and you'll see that, you know, it gets taken care of through their policy. Your, your homeowner's insurance shouldn't have to cover something that is caused by the contractor. Mm -hmm. The that question doesn't... is, you know, like what's the limit of that and, and how does that work out? And that is something the insurance companies figure out uh, on the back end. 
you know, for all we know, it could be the insane insurance company that insures you, that insures them. Um, and then it makes it easy. Sometimes it's two different insurance companies, but the idea is, you know, we've all been in car accidents, I'm sure. <laughs> Your, your insurance companies go to battle together and you generally don't have to deal with it much. The important thing is that uh, you've talked to your insurance company, you have an open claim, all that data you have, you know, keep track of it. And that's the data you provide to the contractor's insurance. And, and they'll, you know, that's just more ammo for you to be able to Great. Um, come out. And, and, and you're right about your observation because uh, um, the, 10 days ago, when they were doing more excavating, the house started to shake again. So much so that it was knocking cutting boards and things off the window casing in the kitchen. Yeah. And, and I went outside to talk to them. And I said, look, I'm, I know you're doing your job, but you're knocking things off the walls in my house. And his reply was, um, well, um, we'll try to do this a little better. Well, that doesn't change what's happening to my house. Mm -hmm. And so, I, you know, you're right. And they're going to minimize anywhere they can. Um, that was my concern is that, um, well, again, if, thank if you so Zach, much. Yeah. Zach and Kevin, is it possible? Because both of you are on site constantly. You've been chasing this contractor. So is it possible that um, you could be there um, with Mr. Johnson when there is a meeting with the contractor, just for as a witness? Sure. Yeah, so the, the, the last uh, paragraph in our email, you know, it says we... We asked for a um, uh, response from the contractor by two o'clock on Friday uh, as to how they're going to handle, uh, you know, the claim. And basically what they should tell us is we're going to meet with, you know, folks on site to look at the claim, mm -hmm. uh, gather the information and then contact our insurance company. Yeah, um, okay. You know, sometimes it sounds like these damages are more than something that could be handled by, you know, a contractor coming in and seeing some split, uh, you know, sheetrock and saying, you know, how much is that going to cost? We'll, we'll cut you a check and walk away. It sounds like the damages here are, are, are more severe than um, something that that will handle. So I'm sure that the insurance companies will get involved, but we can help facilitate that first meeting, certainly. Thank you. And you, you might, something you might want to think about too. I mean, Bill Mono is on as well. Mm -hmm. And um, as I mentioned in my letter, um, the crack in, in his wall and his stairwell lines up almost exactly with the damage in my house. So whatever was going out on the road, um, certainly reverberated back and forth across Keller Drive and, and caused linear damage to both of our homes. I mean, it's, it's no accident that those things are almost lined up directly. So I think it would be helpful if and when um, that, you know, Bill might want to be present also. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I didn't mean to exclude you, Mr. Mono. It's just um, I, Mr. Johnson's damages are so much more severe. I just wanted to make sure that he wasn't so distressed or felt that we were not going to help um, make sure to make him whole. This was very unnecessary. And let me stress as well, Mr. Mono, if there's a, if you have a claim, you know, you should submit that to the town and we'll forward that on to the contractor as well. Right. Because we can only do it with a claim. So go ahead, Kevin. A hey, question, Zach. Um, at this point, I know it's outside the contract, but can can we request for the remainder of some of their their heavier work that they um, put up a seismograph, be able to get your uh, ground vibrations, very similar to like they do for drilling and blasting? Um, it's it's hard to change what's you know in the signed contract currently. Uh, I'll, I'll say that I have I'd have to review the excavation compaction and backfill spec uh, a little closer to see um, if that's possible. It's I mean th the short answer is yes. You can request it. Whether they do it or not, you know, is another story. So um, yeah, but they only have one more section to put in, and it's and it seems like what it was was the taking down of the old culvert. So it's I mean it's not. I don't know. What's there's there, there's compaction to do. I mean, they need a, a fairly sizable piece of equipment to compact the soil correctly. Uh, we do know the soils out there are, you know, clay. They tend to reverberate vibrations more than other types of soil. Um, the remaining work, you know, the heavy hitting, as far as I can see, is going to be that compaction. There's not a whole lot of more demolition to happen. So um, I wouldn't expect too much more in terms of... Um, disruption in that in that respect from here on out uh, but it's something we could request mr johnson um i have one 
one other thing as well. Um, both Bill and I have been very concerned about erosion. And I mean, with, I mean, they just removed the, the partial dams from the brook yesterday. So the, the water's been washing across our property. And I, I mean, yes, admittedly, we live in a floodplain, but the, the water's just been very peculiar. And um, Kevin, what was it, two months ago, I think, I'm concerned because I mentioned in my first letter, uh, the back section of my property adjacent to Keller Drive has started to sink. And I don't know if we need to bring in a geologist or something, but I'm very, very concerned that there may be a huge sinkhole or something going on with the water running off the Pocumptuck underground because there's such a high water table all along Kelleher Drive to begin with. I don't know what happens with that, but I do know that there's an obvious and pronounced sink in my backyard and that was not there until all the excavation began and, and you know, all the water running every which way. Bill, you want yeah. to say something about that? I'd be, I'd be before before Bill, real quick. I'd be happy to go look at that with you at some point here. Um, you know, I used to live on one twenty three North Main, right across the street, actually, an apartment. You know, ten years ago. So, uh, I'm well aware of the magnitude of flooding that's happened there throughout the years. That that culvert and situation there tends to flood quite a bit. The one thing we paid attention to with the contractor very closely is the height of their coffer dam and you know the rate at which their pumps are pumping. The intent is to, you know, bypass pump that in, that stream and not create any additional um, upstream restriction or downstream restriction uh, than what was there before. And I think there's been a handful of times where it has probably exceeded that a little bit. And we've had quite a few massive storms, um, you know, this throughout this winter and, and uh, fall time. But for the most part, I think they've done a good job of, of letting that flow go when needed. Not maybe not on purpose, but incidentally, it flows over the copper dam they had, right, and just kind of kept going downstream. So, um, if there's a if there's an issue with your yard sinking as a re results uh, related to flooding specifically, um, and it's something that we can we can look at and see, uh, happy to look at that. And if there's a claim associated with that, you know, that's something that um, can be added as well. See, my my concern is is that um, there's a, a direct correlation between how that the property started to sink and the excavating that they were doing down by the brook. And I mean, Kevin, I, I had you come look, um, you got, you got to witness what was going on. And I mean, very clearly the property is changing. Yeah. I, I, I can say that, you know, I did see the depressions on, you know, from, from where it was. Um, I, I honestly don't know what it looked like before, but you know, and, and you know, as well as I do, you know, we didn't take any, any measurements, but, you know, visually, I can say, well, yeah, it's definitely deeper than it was when you and I looked at it uh, two months ago, roughly. I think, anyway, we're 100% going to work with you, Mr. Johnson and Mr. Mono, and, and make sure that um, you're not any more distressed than you already are. I'm really sorry. Thanks. Um, Bill, did you want to say something about the erosion in your property? Belmano, I think you're muted still, Mr. Mono. I must have a mute button on or something. Not. Yeah. From... We can't hear you, Bill. Doesn't look like he's muted. It looks like he's not plugged in. Yeah. Huh. The Dave Wolfram effect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah iPhone works fine. The computers. Yeah. Mr. Mato, don't it's, feel bad. I had, had a horrible up. time yesterday. Doesn't work again. Mr. Mono, if it helps, I can share my screen with the dial-in number. That might help you. Well, okay. Um, is there... Anything else you'd like to add, Zach, while we're waiting for Mr. Mono? Um, you know, just in general, uh, you know, keep in mind, this is a grant funded project. Um, you know, design was grant funded, construction is grant funded. Uh, the town's aware that, you know, there's a limited budget. Uh, we're certainly on top of that contractor to be installing things correctly um, and holding them to that. 
the extended duration, uh, you know, partially due to some unforeseen conditions. There was an electric line that was hit that nobody knew was there. Eversource didn't even know it was there. Um, that added two weeks to construction. You know, we're, we're, for lack of a better term, we're hammering these guys pretty hard to keep moving. Um, you know, certainly construction is construction and, you know, this, there's some degree of uh, disruption to be expected, but I think we're all experiencing, you know, above and beyond that. And we're all doing our best to um, motivate these folks to get in and get out of here and, and be done with it. Thank you very much, Zach. Um, yeah, thank you. I mean, from the get go, their, their ideas have been ludicrous. The fact that they wanted to reroute Kelleher Drive through my driveway, um, unheard of. That was the original route, Dave. I'm sorry? That was the original route. That went through, right? <laughs> Don't tell the contractor that. <laughs> but but then people were still riding Morgan horses, correct? Right. Yeah. Well, no, that's back when that house was owned by Kelleher. Uh huh. Uh, well, that's we don't need to. That house is offset in the back side of your property. Well, we won't relive these um, used tos, and um, yeah, I know. And Mr. Johnson, but, thank you. Know, you. And Mr. Mono, Bill and sorry. Dave, you know rest assured that you know any contract there's a bond that's posted and there's insurance and the reason that's there is to protect everybody and make sure they're whole and everything's done and we've been working with zach and he has been really um really wicked good with us um helping us because this has been a very difficult contractor i i have one more request if i may if, if there is a meeting or if it's going to be on the select board meeting in the evening again, could you folks contact me because I, I, I'm still working pretty long hours and, and I, I changed my hours. I was, I was supposed to be working this evening, but I changed that so I could attend the meeting. And if I knew if there was something I needed to be aware of or attend to or be a part of, I'd be willing to do that. But um, Mr. Mr. Johnson, can you send me your, or call me and leave me a message with your telephone number? I couldn't find it. I can give it to you right now if you like. Oh, no, it's then. No, don't do that. Oh, you're right, you're right. <laughs> Never you mind. <laughs> Just touch base with her, please, if you could. We don't want the whole world to know your number. Right. Yeah. yeah, good call. <laughs> so, Oh my Mr. Gosh. Johnson, Mr. Johnson, Zach and, and Kevin are very um, willing to help with you and Casey. So just get your contact information to Casey as well as Mr. Mono and, and we will be able to let you know if there's anything coming up, okay? Now, let me ask you this question. Can I reach, Casey, can I reach you on, on, the, uh, on the website or how do I reach you? You can reach me either by telephone at the office um, and that's on the website or my, my email is on the website as well. Okay. If you look at the, the staff section, the select board office section, my email, Jennifer's email and Pat's email are all on there. All right, I'll get something okay. out to you then uh, this evening Perfect. or tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you all very much for your, for your assistance and your advocacy. Thank I've you been feeling very helpless about this whole thing. I Thanks, know, and I'm so sorry you were distressed. It's, it's, it's awful. Thank well, you. I love my house. <laughs> I know. We love it too. <laughs> it's very, well, thank you very much. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Next item on the agenda. Chris is here. Chris Curtis. Um, do we need Zach for this at all? Uh, no. Okay. All right. Zach, thank you for coming. I'm, I'm very appreciative. Yep, as always, call with any questions. Take care. Okay, thank you. No, I thank you very much. Um, I appreciate all the work. This is this was really has not been pleasant. So thank you. No, we'll get through it and uh, hopefully no additional funds from the town needed. I hope so. <laughs> Take care. All right, thank you. Um, Chris, is Chris on? I am on, yes. Oh, great. Hi, Chris. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. So, the next item on the agenda is um, their green infrastructure policy um, committee appointments, the new MVP grant and the uh, MVP project updates. We did right. just get an update on Kelleher Drive from Kevin and it looks like hopefully it is wrapping up. Um, so go ahead, Chris. Okay, thank you um, and good evening. 
Um, so you, uh, you adopted a green infrastructure policy last April, uh, April 2020, um, and uh, the policy called for the establishment of an advisory committee. And we talked at your last meeting about um, the possible membership of, of this group. And um, I put together for your consideration some suggested um, appointments for the committee. I'm not sure if you have that material in front of you. Yes. Yep. 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 So um, the only thing they have, Chris, is they have the list appointees list because I was waiting to hear back from you about the comments I gave you on the other documents. So I don't have that. Oh, okay. You'll need to screen share that. <laughs> okay. But they do have the committee suggestions. Okay. Um, people. All right. Um, so I reached out to the planning board. Um, see that Annalie is, is on. Um, tonight. Uh, Annalie volunteered to uh, be the board's representative, which is really great and helpful. Thank you. Um, most of the other representatives are already on the MVP court that's been meeting for several years now. Um, so those would be you know, similar. Um, and then- Why don't you read them, Chris, anyway, yeah. just so people are clear? Yes. Uh, so uh, from the select board, Carolyn Ness, Town Administration, uh, Casey Warren and Jennifer Gannett, DPW, Kevin Scarborough, Police, John Pachorek, Conservation Commission, Tim Hilchey, Planning Board, Anna Lee, and I, I'm going to virtue your Wolf, Wolf Cool, um, Committee, M.A. Swedland and Lori Busada, uh, EMD, Lori McComb, and then building department, uh, we Bill. need to find a representative from that. Well, that would be Bill, uh, I mean, uh, Bob Walton. Okay. I've talked to Bob and, and asked him to participate. So that would be our recommendations for the composition of the, of the committee. And this group would meet um, every month or two um, to basically work on implementing the green infrastructure policy and, and following up on some of the things that are that are called for in that in that policy. Okay. Great. Um, I will make a motion to appoint um, the people that uh, Chris read. So it's a formalized committee. I'll second that motion. Trevor McDaniel. Um, is there any other further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Okay, thank you, Chris. And thank you for everyone that's volunteered. Um, but uh, you know, it's I, additional additional I, meetings, but honestly, they are worth it. Okay. Wait, wait one sec. Were you, um, Chris, were you working on a charge? Is that what Casey, and, uh, was it? There? She was gonna update us on the new grant as well as projects. No, but what I was asking about is the charge of this committee. Because oh. typically they need, you know, language of like, this is what you do. Well, it's part of the policy, green. I think the policy is, is the that. The policy, part. yeah. The policy that we did is supposed to be, we're supposed to be reviewing everything that happens and to the best of our ability, um, make sure that the policy is implemented. Okay, I'm good with that. Thank you. Okay. Um, so go ahead, Chris. Sorry. So the next item would be um, a brief discussion about the next round of MVP grants. We received notification from the State Executive Office of Environmental Affairs that they were um, calling for an expression of interest from towns that would like to apply for the next round of, of grants. And that is due on February 26th. Um, so it's not the full grant application, but it would be, you know, an, an opportunity for the town to say that they, they're interested in applying and, and what generally the town would like to apply for. Is this new? This is new, isn't it? It is, it is a new that. approach. Yep. It seems like every that they add something to the <laughs> complexity of the applications. Casey? 
They well, actually, this follows the this letter of interest um, requirement is a new requirements for some of these other grants, particularly those related to the community one stop for growth portal that they just created. They require the same thing, Chris. A okay. letter of interest. So they want basically what they want is an outline of what you intend to do. So they know when you send everything in, they have a chance to review it and they can give you feedback. That's, I think some of the intent is mm -hmm. the state hasn't really been giving great feedback to towns that it, that will help them achieve the grant appro uh, the grant itself. So that was from what I heard in my meeting about the one stop for growth portal today. Um, I think that may be the intent that they're, they've gotten enough feedback that they're finally acknowledging it. Can I ask a quick question though? Carolyn made a motion. I didn't hear who seconded it and I didn't get the vote. I don't think it was. And that was the motion to appoint I, the suggested. You know what? I was just, yes. Trevor seconded, seconded it. Motion. Trevor seconded it and I never called oh, okay. it. Yep. Call I'm sorry. It. I was sorry. moving on. I was moving on to Chris's next part. So all those in favor. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. Hi, Carolyn Ness. I'm really sorry, Casey. Thank you, Casey, for catching <laughs> yeah. me. I just didn't want to lose it. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. No, I'm, I apologize. I was so busy trying to check off stuff here on the agenda. So, okay. I didn't want to short you, Chris. Um, okay. So did you get enough information from our previous discussions to, to write a letter of interest, or do you want another meeting? Well, I had prepared an outline of uh, what I think our discussions have led us to uh, so far in terms of components of, of the uh, next grant application. And Casey, I wonder, would it be at all possible for you to screen share that? Um, I can't. That's my problem. I'm, I'm ha similar to the connection problems David's been experiencing. I have that same problem. Um, Trevor, if I send this to you, can you screen sure. share something? Absolutely. Okay. Let me send, I'll send what I just sent to you, Chris, to Trevor. Okay. Um, in the meantime, me I'll, I'll just talk through it. Um, sorry about the technical difficulties. So there were, there were five elements that we had discussed at previous meetings that um, seemed like there was some general support for. Uh, the biggest one would be um, construction project, which you may not be too excited about doing at this point, given our construction um, problems. But we had talked about doing the Leary lot um, as part of this next grant and uh, doing it as a, um, a green infrastructure component that would make it eligible for this grant. Um, so that one, um, the state share of that would be ballpark about $96,000. Um, that's about 20% of the overall cost. That's about maximum we think we can get from the state for that component. So the total budget for um, for the project in, in terms of the parking lot is about $480,000 based on the estimate from Ty and Bond. Do we know what the cycle is for um, complete streets, Trevor or Casey? I'm, I'm blanking out when the complete streets um, I'm not sure the cycle either way. I have to look into that. I, I just, a side note, I met with, uh, with, a, with um, Jeff from Berkshire Design today just to walk around town and talk about. Um, oh, Trevor, thank you for doing that. A larger picture of, you know, so we can kind of, kind of grab this all together. And I, you know, I, I would love to have him touch base with Chris um, and, um, I did give Chris, I gave you your name to him as, as I think Boston was looking for information on our, on our policy. And I thought maybe you might be able to help there or, or you know, just provide some information. Um, but, yes. Uh, is this the right screen, Chris? Or is, is there another, I know there's two there, files. Um, it's there's, the other one. It's the it's other the one. one. Okay, yep, bear with me then. I'll grab that. Um, well, it is this one. So let me go back to this. So that the green parking lot um, construction is is the big piece. The, the other um, elements are relatively small in size. And as you can now see on the screen, 
Um, there's some funding for, for green um, infrastructure policy implementation, uh, coordinating the committee and working on trying to advance that policy. Uh, the Healthy Soils Demonstration Project that we had applied for last year um, for $18,000 is the third element. Um, continuation of climate set, uh, client science class programming at Frontier High School, which we've started um, in previous grants but would like to continue, is a small um, uh, item again for about $8,000. And then um, some further public outreach, which was Carolyn's um, suggestion at a previous meeting uh, that we have a follow on community forum to the one that was so successful previously and, and try to keep our, our website updated on um, MVP issues. Um, and that's 4,000. So um, ballpark total is about 136,000. Assuming that these are the components that um, the town wants to pursue. We don't have to decide this tonight, um, but it would be helpful to get a, a handle on this, obviously in time for the for the expression of interest deadline. I um, so Carolyn and David, I talked to Brenda and Barb today. I'm just thinking of finance, right? How much money do we have? Uh, we always know it's good to go after this stuff, um, but we do have some other major expenses. So I've been trying, I talked to Brenda and Barbara today and I wanted to talk to Casey and, and you all about getting a meeting together. Um, either, I don't really wanna do it on our next select board meeting if we could have a specific date as it gets to budgets, um, but really just to maybe have a joint meeting with all of them and finance committee just to talk about, um, you know, we have to purchase or either uh, go out to bid for another year on the land for the um, pickle pickle factory, New England Baker's land. So that 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 loan is due again pretty quick. I think it's June first. It's due, and then um, you know we'd love to get that sold for sure, and we'll work on that stuff. But then you know, and then we have um, all the the stuff for the sewer, and we have to pay off the um, the first phase, which is the clarifier at the sewer. So I just thought maybe it, as we decide on this, and I'm always for this program, it's been wonderful for our town, just kind of like put all these things out on a list is to go, okay, <laughs> these are all the things we got to pay for this year. Um, do we have the money for these or which ones do we have the money for? Oh, you're muted, Carolyn. Sorry. Yep. I know I have concern about the, the outlay on the grants. I'm, I'm the, pretty the, much. Uh, oh, sorry, David, go ahead. Well, it's just, you know, the budget is going to be very tight coming up. And what we have, unfortunately, what I call discretionary funds is very low. Hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know this is important work to get done, but we've got to be very diligent and make sure that we're not overextending. I know um, the February 26th date is, is, oh, is hanging over your head, Chris. And I apologize next week. Unfortunately, I'm pretty tied up. I have an all week conference. So I have to attend most, most of the days next week. Um, so could we meet um, with the finance committee, have some kind of joint meeting on the, on maybe on the 9th, February 9th. Dave, are you, do you have that night available? Can you, do you know offhand? We have a I'm big training sure. session that night, Carolyn. We have what? We have a training session, a zoning planning training session that night. Oh. And I don't know if we have any other meetings. Let me check the calendar while you're um, Well, maybe, um, you know, I could do it Monday night, the yeah. eight, as long as it was after five o'clock. Yeah. If Dave has that available. I, I feel like we should have you know, we need to have some kind of uh, joint. Let's yeah. what, let's put everything on the table. Let's talk yeah. about what's hanging out there because we haven't had any kind of um, meeting that will um, sort of give us a big picture. Right. Right. Yeah. And we've had some things that have changed in the past in the the last thirty days. Yeah. After capital budgets were due, that had to be addressed 
before we could even send out more information. Mm -hmm. So, right. so could could we look at the week of the eighth and try to give? I think I'm available that Monday and Tuesday. Okay. Oh, okay. Right. Well, I have I have two meetings in the afternoon on the eighth, but they should be done by five o'clock. Maybe we could do five thirty or six, one or the yeah. other. I don't know what works on the eighth or ninth. Okay. Yeah, what works for you, Trevor and Dave? Yeah, I, if after five is good with me, um, I believe so. And then, um, then we just check in with the finance committee and see when they can get together. I was talking and to capital as well. They're gonna, yeah. they're gonna and capital as well. Yeah, I'd love to get everybody in the room, uh, virtual room, and just say, look, here's where we're at. These are the this is what we're looking at financially. These are the, the mandatory outlays or decide to kick the can down the road another year on the land or, you know, but uh, and pay off the clarifier. You know, we were going to do that. That's typically out of the reserve fund. But, um, you know, the, uh, the I forget what you call that. The um, Well, I, I just feel like we haven't out. had we have had no opportunities even to have like any discussions with each right. other at all. I know. And um we need I to feel, I feel like we want to do something, but maybe, um, and then Casey, maybe you can research the complete streets um, cycle as well, because I, the, you know, we we want the complete streets to happen. Yeah. Um, and maybe we can roll it in with the. I mean, if I felt like we were getting some money on complete streets and doing something, I think I would feel more favorable about the Leary lot. I mean, we need right. to do this. Yeah. And if we're going to have economic improvement downtown and complete streets and all that kind of stuff, it is part of it. But it might not be the the best year to do it. I'm just, I don't, I don't have a. Usually, I have a really good feeling or you know a handle on what's happening. I don't, I don't feel like I have as a good a handle because we had not very much discussion. Right. Yeah, we need to do budget stuff for right. sure. So I, I feel like we need these discussions to come together on, um, I mean, people don't have to agree whether we're going yeah. forward or not. We just need to know, we just need to list stuff out so I can grasp. Right, and I've got some of that done. There was a couple outliers that I was waiting for and this was one of them. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. But there may be an opportunity to, so this one, community one stop for growth portal ties a lot of these things together from what I understand, I haven't dug through the portal itself. There's webinars coming up. I was gonna tell you this later, but because it relates to complete streets and, and or pulling these projects into the same, into one oversight method, yeah. it may be useful to try to go through that community one stop, even if we could just get technical assistance to right. pull everything right. together. And we need to Because you've got up. different disciplines. Right, and we need to follow up with DOT and find out what their, verify their timetable um, about turning over Sugarloaf and everything they to us. They did get the bond bill, so. Yeah, I mean, they did get uh -huh. the bond bill, but we don't have, I don't have, or I haven't heard of confirmation of a construction timetable yet, though. Yeah. So, so we, we'll, need to, we need to verify that that's actually happening yeah. because that's part of our being able to move ahead as well. Yep. Okay. So Casey, you kind of know what we're talking about? I do. I'm writing notes. Okay. And Chris, if we if we're able to meet on the eighth, would you feel like that's that's not cutting it too close for you? That should be fine. Okay. okay. I, I just I I don't want to give you an answer and then have to not feel comfortable with it. Sure. That okay. Makes we just, because of COVID, everybody's been so busy, nobody's had um, time to really talk about this. Right. Okay, so let's leave that one there. And uh, can we, uh, Trevor, switch to that other file that- you can Oh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So in terms of uh, MVP project updates, the thing I wanted to focus on um, specifically was the uh, the tree box filter project for the town center. And as you know, um, we've had some issues with that, but the town has purchased and, and owns um, six tree box filters, which are 
sitting over next to the Leary lot and uh, need to go into the ground in the spring um, along with the trees. And um, we had problems with really three of the originally projected sites for these tree box filters. Um, we also had problems with our engineer um, who's had some health problems and um, there's some serious issues there. So what I put together here is just an approach to try to restart this project and get it finished so that we can, we can wrap up this MVP grant successfully and do it in a way that is going to make the uh, property owners and merchants in the town center um, happy, hopefully. So um, what the table um, on the bottom of this slide shows is, is the original tree box filter locations on the left-hand column. And there were six of those, uh, two on South Main Street, two on Elm Street, and two on North Main Street. Um, three of them have pretty significant issues. Um, one on Elm at Four Elm Street uses a parking space that um, is is close to the center. Uh, the one at uh, 61 North Main Greenfield Savings Bank, we when the excavation was begun for that, they hit unknown underground utilities, which we've talked about um, previously, and they had to stop um, excavating there. And then uh, the one at at North Main Street at the market, um, similar problem, also uses a parking space that's that's a, a pretty important parking space. So what I'm suggesting here is that we move those three um, to a, alternative locations. And one of them ha has already been moved. The Greenfield Savings Bank um, tree box filter was moved to the senior center and is installed. Um, so that one's done. Um, we had two alternative locations designed by our engineers that are both on Sugarloaf Street. Um, and those would be, I think, the ideal locations to move the other um, questioned um, sites to, as you see, the, the revised locations on the right-hand side would show where they would be moved to. So what I'm suggesting, I guess, is an approach where um, we try to address these issues um, that we meet with the property owners. Um, I'm happy to, to take the lead on or help with that um, effort, um, present these alternatives, uh, which hopefully will mitigate the concerns that folks have, um, that we complete the process of getting MassDOT permits for the Sugarloaf Street locations. Um, we need to talk to the surveyors who did the original survey to find out whether or not they had picked up property lines um, because they are not showing up on the plans and that's just a, a technical issue we need to resolve. Um, and then we, um, we need to talk about the engineer's situation, but I don't know if this is the right time to talk about that. Um, no. So we'll talk about that, about that separately. Uh, we have executive session at the end of the meeting. Chris for that. Okay. So I wanted to present this game plan to you just so you have a sense of, of what's possible and that there is um, a reasonable solution to some of the issues that have, have come up here. And uh, happy to discuss it. Have any questions? Dave or Trevor, do you have any questions? Let Kevin go first. Um, okay, so um, I have reached out to MassDOT and they requested, um, well, first question they had for me was, is, well, what's a tree box? <laughs> Excuse me. So um, I got in touch with Chris and he was able to forward me um, plans. So the plan's complete, which is good because it gives complete drawings of layout, um, uh, elevations, everything for the two spots there on uh, Sugarloaf Street and uh, Grave Street, Park Street area. Um, and then the third spot I thought we picked was going to be over by the entrance to the parking lot of the elementary school. I thought we found one that was going to be reasonable, that was not going to be impeding any type of visibility 
any type of safety issue. Um, I know I ran it past uh, uh, Chief Pachurik. You know, what do you think about this one? And he says, you know, he asked, he says, is there going to be any site, dis uh, site issues? I was like, no, zero. And he goes, but good for him. So that could very well have been the third place that we were looking at for the alternative. So Kevin, um, when we originally were looking at the elementary school site, that one was um, originally going to be one of the ones that are designed under the MVP4 grant. That, that, that site has not yet been designed um, Okay. Uh, so we, we could potentially use that if there's a problem with one of the revised locations that I'm showing in the table here. But if, if these locations look okay to you, I think we'd be probably in better stead to use those because the designs are complete for them and we wouldn't have any holdup in the time frame for installation. The only reason Certainly. that in my mind that the reason why that um, design work is so important is because you want to calculate how much stormwater you actually are retaining and filtrating. And so, I mean, if the elementary school, the element, we could use it at the elementary school and it would look lovely and it would do its job, but I'm not sure we're, we're really trying to do an area downtown. And I, I feel like, you know, we rather than move it out, that's like a later, I mean, we're going to keep moving it out, but I would like to do the downtown as much as possible. And, and, and to be clear, the elementary school, I'm not suggesting that we would not do that, but that would be designed under the current grant and then constructed under a future grant. Did you have any other, um, uh, Trevor or Dave, so, did you have any other questions on it? Not really. They, uh, Go ahead, Dave. I don't know. One of the things I thought about was, you know, maybe we should be putting one over by the library somewhere. It's going to have less impact on parking spaces and stuff. So. <clears throat> hey, but, hey, Chris. Yeah. Um, hey, I'm looking at the I'm looking at the the list on the left hand side that 53 South Main the spirit shop on um, yeah. that one that one that that's a move need to be moved too so that does have issues you can't use that one because it's on top of the gas oh okay so then maybe oh, so so there is going to be another one you're going to end up having to find a home for <clears throat> okay. So what I would suggest then is once we resolve the engineering um, situation, we can have uh, the engineer look at an alternative location for the spirit shop um, site. I think the elementary school is one possibility. We could look at the library. We've also, uh, Casey and Kevin and I looked at a, at a site that is on Elm Street, but it's further towards the west. Um, which looked like it would have less impact on any parking issues. So that's a third possibility. So we can, we can do that um, and, and try to address that as quickly as possible. That would have been across the street of uh, leader lumber. That's right. Okay. Uh, my only uh, comments is that, you know, I just like to get these into a master over you plan I know that's not going to happen right now it just you know I'm just saying like actually it's supposed to happen though mm -hmm. Trevor this yeah is the whole point of hiring this <coughs> engineering firm is supposed to, that came with such a you know outstanding recommendations is that we did have the calculations and the designs that would actually have be impactful on water retention you know, I mean, and filtration. So, I mean, it would reduce stormwater runoff, but it also increase the filtration of the water and stuff like that. So it, no, I, it, was, it was supposed to really have impact. And that's I, why I, it's so distressing that this- Yeah, is that we're losing all of that. Not, for me, I'm like more aesthetics. Like I know that, that all oh, makes sense. Oh, I want it to look it. good. 
I wanted to look no, up. Well, like how it fits in and, and uh, you know, how it fits into the pavers and the sidewalk and like what our, what our overall plan yeah. is for Elm Street for, for, you know, North Main, um, really our town. So that's what that walk around today was to just kind of get some ideas and talk about what, what our grand vision might be. And again, this is just mine at the moment and what I hear from people. And so the, I, I think, I think the engineer was going to put together some proposals and come back to the town and talk about, you know, what, what we could do long term. I explained kind of all of the grand things that we were working on and what we'd like to do in the future and, but just how they all fit to each other. And like, yeah, it makes sense to have that tree box there and, and it, and the curbing ties in really good with the way the, the, you know, the, the cement ties into that and the brick pavers go here and, and it just all, and the, and the nice light post is there that's black and it is decorative and, just a larger vision is all. And I know that we can't do that right now. I know we got this grant, we got to get them in the hole. I, that's all, so. Well, it, it's supposed to do that, Trevor. Yeah. And it's we'll, supposed we'll to that. also reduce water runoff and yeah. and have better filtration of cleaner water. So. And I'd love Chris. Multiple to, things that was supposed to do. Yeah. I'm, we're okay. not giving up on it and we're making it be still attractive. Yeah. Oh, they're pretty. I mean, they're going to look great when they're done. I mean, it's a neat uh, design and it serves a purpose and I'm 100% behind it. Okay. All right. Um, well, so we're going to follow up on this later, Chris, and we'll get back to you. Yep. That, that, that's, um, that's all I was hoping for. I just wanted to update you on our proposed approach. And, um, and really, I think um, if, if we're in general agreement with the ideas here, I think it would be helpful to initiate the outreach to the property owners relatively soon. So if we had a select board member that was willing to um, do that with us, um, we could either do that by walking around and talking to the property owners or we could arrange a meeting. Um, I think those are two different alternatives. Okay. We'll have the decision later today, tonight, okay? Okay. Um, all Thank right, you. Is, there anything, is there anything else, Chris? No, nope, that's it for me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, did we have any uh, selectman announcements? Um, I, I guess I would just, a couple of things. I, I really want to just re recap, you know, again, I met with, the, with um, Jeff Squire from Berkshire Design today to just look at overall, you know, a parking lot around the town hall, like a uh, walking path around, around the common, I mean, around the, um, I also picked up plans for initial kind of draft ideas for the common. Um, so I have those and we'll, after the common committee meets, we can start sharing those and adjusting those things. But um, interesting survey, we got the survey from the common and uh, so we'll look at, we'll look at all that and um, how that all ties in and what, what we want downtown to look like. Um, uh, sewer. So I had a meeting uh, Tuesday, uh, just a couple of us um, on the sewer kind of progress. So I'll just give you a quick update. So um, the bids came back for the equipment for phase one. So a couple of things we separated out was the UV uh, disinfectant um, equipment, the uh, second clarifier, uh, that equipment, the uh, screen system, uh, the bar screen system, and the grit removal system. So those bids all came back and they're being evaluated now. And I know Keith was on vacation. So I think they were going to, they may have already had the meeting where they evaluated those and they'll kind of come to us to talk about what they recommend going forward. I think one of them, one of those aspects, they only got one bid on and they uh, felt maybe they would just roll that back into the greater bid so that we may get other options instead of just that one option to look at. Uh, I think it was the grit removal system. Um, so anyway, so those are kind of coming together. And we, um, I think once those decisions have been made, I had requested a, uh, another kind of larger meeting where we have, um, you know, Julie Chalfont from the finance committee who is on this kind of steering committee and Kevin and uh, just everybody get, get together in the room again and say, this is what we got back for bids. This is what we're doing for alternative alternates for the bids. And it's gonna go out to bid now and, and bless it and send it on. And, and I know Casey's working on the last stuff for USDA. There's a couple of items I think still left to go on that. And uh, so we're very close to going out to bid for the project. And 
we're hoping to do that, you know, in the next few weeks and we'll see what the bids come in at and, um, and get moving Could on. you that. make sure that you post that as a select board meeting, um, mm -hmm. just um, in case um, Dave and I want to go? Absolutely. I mean, usually I try Absolutely. to go. Yep. Yep. For sure. And um, so. Trevor, can you take down your shared screen? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for the reminder. Um, so let's see. So we did that. Um, we've been having, I, I know that you may touch on this. Carolyn, and maybe I'll just leave all the thunder for you, but we've been working hard on trying to figure out vaccines for the, for our town. And yeah, I, I was going to um, do I'll an update on that. Yeah, I'll leave um, all for you, but we, Carolyn has been working tremendously hard on all of that. Um, so we can move right into that. If Okay. I'll let you, yeah, go ahead. Yep. Well, the information is changing daily, sometimes more than daily. Um, the latest right now is that there's no vaccine for public providers for this coming week. So there's nothing we can do for this coming week. Um, the earliest we can put in for um, vaccine is for the week of February 8th. And um, there are approximately five providers in Franklin County, Deerfield, um, Hollamont Mohawk is one, um, Greenfield Montague and the FERCOG. So we've been told right now that there's um, only a hundred doses per public, you know, number. Um, so we're the county wide. We're only having about 500 doses. Um, it's confusing to the public, and I'm apologizing right up front because people are obviously hearing about um, vaccines, you know, available at Big Y, uh, CVS, Stop and Shop. Some of those like CVS is a federal contract. So that is coming from a different source. <laughs> Others, I don't know for sure, but you know, some of them are coming from the state and those are been committed and have come out and they're actually now distributing it that had already been given out. Our vaccine had been going to um, private, I mean, to first responders and our next group was the over 75s. And um, right now, Jen Bartek of the police department is working with the senior center and um, the um, uh, triad and putting together all the numbers with our four towns. So we have, you know, an exact number to put in. We will put in for that exact number for the week of the eighth, but we don't know if in fact we'll be able to get vaccine more than our hundred, that is going to be our limit for the month of um, February. I feel very co confident that this will change. It might change as quick as Friday. Um, but what happened was with the change of administration, there was a, a misunderstanding that there was this big stockpile. There was no stockpile. The feds actually don't have any extra vaccine, so it was not being delivered to the states. Massachusetts, I think the last delivery they got was like 5,000 doses or something for the whole state. Yes. Um, anyway, the Biden administration had reached out to the manufacturers. They, he had signed, President Biden had signed the Defense Production Act. So uh, one of the holdup was the glass vials I mean, it's just stuff like that. There wasn't enough glass vials, so that's being done. There's, you know, everybody's trying to ramp up. So hopefully once we get a set, there is now a national vaccine policy. So once the deliveries are set, the states can anticipate, then they will be able to allocate to us. And we've been working very hard. Um, so what we're gonna do to begin with, because we only, potentially have very little vaccine is we're pooling our vaccine countywide. The first responder clinic up in Greenfield had really worked well because the senior center up there is closed and it's a brand new building. It's, it's hundred percent accessible and, and the ventilation is good and it has a big, huge common room for people to wait. So we are going to do as much of our 75 year old group as we can 
um, and we will start to sign up as soon as we have any vaccine. And we are organizing our volunteers through the MRC, as I said before, they're taking the they're getting background checks so they can use the prep mod. We've identified people for um, potential training for vaccine managers, for prep mod managers and supervisors. And um, John Pachorek, our police chief, is organizing with Tracy Rogers of the Four Cog for security. Zach Smith, our EMS director, is organizing. Um, the EMS part of it for um, observation and assistance. So everybody is working very hard. We're trying to organize stuff um, and we're having meeting after meeting after meeting. And hopefully as soon as any vaccine comes into the county, we'll be able to set up. And so that's pretty much it. Does anyone have any questions? Nope, oh, just keep our fingers crossed and hope they come soon. Yes. Yes. Well, we're just asking everybody to be on alert, you know, call around, see if you can get something at Big Y. I've, I've gotten a couple texts that people signed up at Big Y. Um, there's apparently a couple, you know, a little bit available at CVS, but, you know, we, we're, we're trying very hard. We're trying to organize it. It is very frustrating. It's confusing. No one is going to be left out. We're going to take care of our four communities down here. Mm -hmm. um, all of us have been working very hard. Trevor, do you want anything to add? Because you've been to a couple of the meetings. No, no, just everything's right on the money. We're trying really hard. We wish it was sooner. Um, it, there's a lot of logistics involved. And, you know, the issue is you just never know how much you're going to get. I know, and as Carolyn said, the Biden administration is doing a much better job and they will start to tell the states three weeks in advance how much the states will be getting because right now they don't know week to week what they're going to get so it's a crapshoot you don't ha and you've got to schedule people so you can't you know it's not like a spot right now where you just hey like the flu clinic we open up and come on drive through you've got to make appointments at this time in this phase so without knowing the total amount the doses the state's getting and therefore we're getting it's going to be slow for the month of february but you know they are ramping up and i know he purchased uh with both manufacturers, another 100 million doses each. So we should have up to 600 million by the summer. That'd be enough to, you know, inoculate 300 million twice. Um, and that should get us to herd immunity. So hopefully by summer we're in good shape, but it's a long rough, I mean, right now, please continue to do everything you can with the other strains popping up and, you know, um, they don't know if it's more deadly, but it's certainly more infectious. Um, we're just seeing more and more cases. So you have to really stop going to see family members and, and really, um, it's very tough. You know, it's where everybody's fatigued, but do the best you can to, to keep a mask on, hand sanitizer, stay distanced. We'll get through this. There, there is light and it's not a Mack truck at the end of the tunnel. It's actually the promised land. It's a free <laughs> the who's <a> tunnel <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we're, we're working that. really hard and i have to say i'm, I'm uh, pleased the numbers are coming down it mm -hmm. seems like it's not but it's um the private schools are just settling in but, and they're doing every they're contained on campus they're not even allowing day students to go home they are on campus as well so um, another week, our numbers will re be reflective of everything being contained, and um, hopefully um, we will have less risk in the community again. But please, please don't let your guard down. And um, we're, like I said, we're doing everything we can to make sure that we get the vaccine as soon as we can. We'll get it out the door, I promise. Okay, moving on. Um, Casey, you want to talk about inspector's pay? Oh, Kevin, I'm sorry. Are you saying goodbye or do you want to say something? Well, I'm actually, I just wanted, I just, I've, I've been on the clock since two o'clock this morning. So I'm yeah. about ready to go to bed. Thank you for making a road safe. Kevin, thank you. Yes. And I'm, I'm totally sorry to make you stay. No, no, no worries. Um, hey, I just want to give you a real quick, um, like, cause I know you got the 350 wood project up and coming um, is one of your, your things you're going to talk about. Um, I reached out to a uh, local, on a uh, milling company um, in town. Um, I've made my last attempt to give them some work. Um, and then I'm gonna move on to the more, and then also go ahead and get in touch with 
um, a couple others to see what they can get for milling. So I'm to assume that you're going to be looking for some slabs to be able to make some quote unquote special projects out of. And then the rest is going to be building material. I don't know, two by fours, four by fours. Uh, I'm not really sure what, okay. what the materials are you going to be looking for, which is going to be kind of key to be able to get a proper cost on what it's going to be to mill all this stuff down. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I will be able to cure the money to take the trees down. But as far as the milling of the trees, there is zero funding for that. Right. So right. we need, so I need, I need a price so I can let you know. So that way we can move forward. I see okay. Jennifer, I see Jennifer on the um, thing. So Jennifer, we're going to talk about it on Monday, I believe, right? Yeah, our next meeting is um, February 1st for the 350th um, committee. We unfortunately had to, re had to uh, reschedule our meeting from this past Monday, so we'll be discussing it then. Um, so from that point moving forward, we should be able to come up with um, concept um, and hopefully in theory have you know, maybe get a quote from 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 few people moving forward to see what the cost would be um, with our design. What is the deadline for you, Kevin? Um, I don't know when the tree's coming down. Um, I, 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 everything's kind of fluid right now, to be honest with you, because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get this so it's, so the trees aren't just go down, sit on the ground, and then they sit there. I, I want to keep this moving. Mm -hmm. um so that's why i'm trying to coordinate everything all at the same time so as soon as the trees come down either they get milled on spot or they go somewhere to be milled um and then we got to figure out where the storage of all this material is going to go also right uh, i know this, carolyn this, um because I, I know that you guys are talking about like the special projects and i'm thinking more of the short building term. materials that's going right. to be produced by um these trees now, understandable. Um, Carolyn, you do have, if I remember correctly, um, there was some money that was in a separate town account that could be utilized for that beforehand if need be. So yeah. I don't know if it needs to be determined for um, where the storage of everything goes um, before we finalize what we're doing. Yeah, I, well, I think what Kevin is looking for is like what are we talking about like for benches or are we talking about, um, you know? Yeah. No, I know what he's talking about, but we will have that at our meeting. So that'll be the goal to get that, get that done for you on the first. If That'd that's, be great. Yeah, okay. as soon as you can get me information on what you guys are looking for, then, then I can move forward on my part. Again, I'm just trying to touch base with somebody that's willing to come out and do this because a lot of times, um, the milling people, um, lumber people, don't want to touch a tree that's not coming out of a forest um, because they're continually paranoid of, okay, well, is there a, a bolt in there someplace right. which is going to ruin their um, their machinery? So I do know that sometimes they're they're a little sketchy about doing something that is not coming out of the forest and something that could be, quote unquote, having uh, foreign materials inside. I mean, I do know that they they run a, a metal detector through the through them to make sure ahead of time, but sometimes stuff slips by. Uh, that being said, I don't know if there's gonna be a price difference between milling something that comes out of the woods or something that comes out of somebody's backyard. So once again, I have no idea what there is for pricing. All right. All right, thanks for that info. I'll make sure I email and make sure that's on our agenda. Thank you, Kevin. All right, have a great night. Thank you all. Good night. Okay. Good night. Uh, Casey, do you want to just address uh, the specters pay again? I think we need to vote on that. You're muted. Hang on, you're muted. Yep. Sorry, Casey. Uh, no, it's just me forgetting that I muted myself so I wouldn't talk around people. Um, the So we brought this to everybody's attention back in December. There's a discrepancy between the inspectors and the inspections department and the inspection services of the assistant health agent. Um, the two rates are different, but similar qualifications, similar training is required to perform those alternative duties to support the board of health agent, as well as supporting the plumbing, gas and wiring uh, inspectors by the alternates. So what I was asking the board 
is whether they would vote a uniform rate for that particular type of work. It's $35 an hour for the assistant board of health agent and $38 an hour for the alternate inspectors in the inspections department. And those alternates cover for the planning or the plumbing, gas and wiring inspectors. Um, so the alternates cover when they aren't around. And it's a similar situation with the board of health agent. The assistant agent covers when that person can't, is out of town or has a conflict or whatever. So anyway, 35 is, I just want to say is not sufficient, especially in COVID times. So we have to at least vote the 38 if we're it, going to have And these are all off of the, comp these, none of these positions are on the compensation plan, so it wouldn't affect the other employees, but it would make a uniform pay rate for that type of work. Um, so I would like to make a motion that we um, increase the Board of Health inspector to $38 an hour from 35 so that they are consistent with the other part-time inspectors. The assistant Board of Health agent, right? Um, yes. Yes. Oh, okay. We call it assistant? Okay. If we call it assistant. Well, sorry, yeah, the I'm assistant. Okay. Yeah, the, the assistant health agent is the backup for Dick's position. Yeah. All right. And that's really the discrepancy. Yeah. All right. Do I have a second? Dave, Dave Wolfram, second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Dave Wolfram, aye. Uh, Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, thank you. I know, I don't know what, uh, I'm not really sure why you're hesitating, Trevor. It's just, I, I just want to assure you that, <laughs> that it's not random people without certification. No, I, I get that. No, what I, the reason I was hesitating, I was trying to run through and pick up the, um, and I'm just looking for it, my email and I wish I had a little more time, but, um, was to go through the wage, um, thing from the FERCOG just to kind of compare, um, um, what others are doing. We're paying a lot more. We're paying. A I lot. mean, to the fur park charges a lot more per hour. If you were going to do it through the fur park. No, no. Uh, what I was saying is the fur park puts out a wage and salary survey, and we just got it the other day. And I was just curious what other, you know, other towns were paying us all. Next item on the agenda is um, Two Feathers Real Estate Payment Agreement. We have yes. to so, Did everyone yes. have a chance to review that? Yeah. Um, I'll entertain a motion. The, uh, so, oh, go ahead, Dave. I'll make a motion that we accept the uh, the agreement that uh, our town clerk treasurer came up with with two feathers for the uh, payment of taxes. I'll second that motion. Um, is there any further discussion? No, I think there's pretty strong language in that and um, I, I trust Barb, so I'm good to go. Okay, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Okay, next item on the agenda is three-year contracts for cooperative health services. Um, I, I, I'm just asking if we could just hold off for a meeting or two on this. Um, I just want to. Yep, I'll hold off. I'll okay. hold off too. I don't. I don't know if we're really getting the bang for our buck. <laughs> well. I, I'm just having some well, questions. I have and to look I, at it a little closer. I, I, um, I read through it again, and I, I just feel like we need to have a few questions answered. Mm -hmm. But we can do that okay. offline. Um, the CARES Act who's, COVID response. Who's whining? <laughs> what? It wasn't who's whining. Oh, <laughs> the dog. I'm sorry. Um, Somebody wants a treat. <laughs> I know. She wants to go outside. Um, were you holding off on the CARES Act uh, for the um, 
request for CARES Act money for-, for I, I would like to hold off on that as well, only because um, supposedly, uh, well, one of the reasons I want to hold off on the, the cooperative health agreement is because um, usually you're, they're supposed to give us an assessment update by March 15th, if there is anything. So I just- There I is. Wanted, so okay. I was in a meeting the other night um, because I sit on that that board as well, and yes, they the uh, the budgets were going up because of all the work that they have been doing because of COVID. And I think Deerfield, you know, as it relates to what we get out of, um, really what we're paying for this year is is the contact tracing stuff. Even yes. though we would pay 15, 20 times more because of all the work Carolyn's doing, you know, uh, the town of Deerfield, I just have to say is getting an amazing deal having Carolyn run this because <laughs> nobody else knows what's going on uh, as much as she does. I mean, I'm not taking away from anything that every, everyone else is doing, but regionally um, there's no one better to be looking at this, this issue. I, I can't stress that enough. Uh, she knows all the cases where they're happening, how they're happening. With that being said, we're we're relying a lot on uh, Lisa and Meg and you know, is it Jeanette? I mean, everybody has been um, working a ton of cases in Deerfield, you know. So the money that we set aside to uh, cover this uh, for CARES Act money is gone. We're in the negative at this point right now, just because of the number of cases that they're doing and following up on. So. Yes, the bill uh, was, I think, was going up 5%. I think all, uh, all healthcare, um, people that are involved with healthcare for the C CHPS is uh, going up 20% next year. And that's like from 20,000 to 25,000 for Deerfield. We pay the biggest share of anybody. Um, there are other towns that pay quite a bit too, but not, not anywhere near as much as that. So just so you know, it's about a 20% increase which sounds like a ton and it is, it's 5,000 bucks, but, um, yeah. it, but there's a lot of need for public health this year, whether that continues year after year, I agree, we should, we should look at that, but just to kind of give an overview of where we're at. I just want to evaluate it and some of our other options. Maybe Absolutely. Potentially. Yep. Um, I agree with you. I'm, I'm good with you. Yep. Okay. So fine. Yep. Um, I think we have a little bit of time in this, so mm -hmm. um, there's no rush. Um, local, uh, district local technical assistant grants. Um, the deadline is the 5th of February. So we actually don't have any time on this, but I had a question um, because there was so many things. I didn't know whether we should just building assistant assistance should be, I mean, an assessment that we were trying to go in with Sunderland and Whaley. Is it better under the efficiency and regionalization grant or do it under this DLTA? Because I had a question whether we would really get funded under DLTA, right. whereas the efficiency regionalization, I think for sure we're gonna get funded. So yes. I, and there were so many other things you could do under D, DLTA that I felt was really good. And I wanted to make sure that we had a really good discussion of that. Um, so- I think John wants you to, just as an aside, I think I sent that email out and I think I put that email in the packet. I think John is encouraging us to go with um, both the DLTA support and regionalization and efficiency. That was how I took his email. Well, the, so we already went with covert assessments, right? Still hasn't been. And moved. we still haven't gotten it. It's not complete. No, it's not complete. I don't think they've even started it for Deerfield. I know that all these other. They have. Oh, they did. They okay. have. Thank you for that update. They did. So that's still in the works because that's another year yes. before. Um, but this one here, um, I was, you know, I, there is a lot of things that we could do. You know, we, I think Casey and I, you talked about a master plan. Um, yeah. That, you know, nobody has to do, but it is. I don't know that everybody has the uh, the appetite for it, but the master plan's but 22 has. years old now. Um, and it, it's. There are other critical things. The vaccination COVID response is the thing that Carolyn brought to my attention. Um, well, and, um, you know, there's a few things that we could cooperate on that would be a huge multiplier. So I'm just throwing it out there because I. So just listen to my list 
Um, we could work on managing flood risks regionally. This is through the um, what Deer, Deerfield Watershed. It's a resilience uh, responding kind of thing. But the creative resilient communities would be a um, creating resilient communities would be a multiplier with conservation district kind of funding and MVP money. So that was kind of attractive to me. The pollinator habitat corridor, if we join that, that goes in, works with the pollinator um, educational unit that is part of the MVP already um, that we're trying to do with Frontier. And that is like hardly any money, but it is a wonderful, um, I mean, it would, it, we would get a lot out of it, I think, because it's already, you know, it started along Route 2. Um, the other thing is the Deerfield River out, Outdoor Recreation Study, the, the Conservation District had gotten $42,000 grant to do that study of the problematic areas like Stillwater Bridge area, because we're trying to get into the bond bill to get the state to pay for some of the erosion and, you know, environmental policing and all that kind of stuff, because, you know, it's, it's every year is a hassle and our, our neighborhood, the neighborhood up there feels stressed out, everything. So that might actually work into that kind of grant. And then um, the other one was, as Casey mentioned, that vaccination planning kind of review thing. I, I think the FERCOG was gonna do that anyway. So I don't really wanna put into it now because I think they're gonna move ahead. Trevor, you, cause you are the president or the chair. So yeah. you know they were already thinking about that. So why would we check that yeah, and have would. our funds spent for that? Cause I think they're gonna do it. Yes, exactly. And, um, but there was, there was some money, you know, there is listed here, um, public health sharing and it sets up a permanent public health nursing program with neighboring towns. And so uh, this whole pandemic is really starting to um, show that it would be very beneficial for the four South County towns to have a, you know, part-time public health nurse by ourselves down here. Mm -hmm. You know, it would save us money in the long run, I think. But anyway, that's something to look at. And the shared services for the information technology service, you know, I'm, you know, I hate technology. You know that I don't, you know, it's just, I'd rather do everything in person, but the cybersecurity thing is very serious and we need to keep moving on that. And um, so that was another thing that, you know, we're, we're doing as a pilot. We're putting Casey, I'm hounding Casey all the time to make sure that we sign up for these damn classes. You know it, but we, we still have to do more. It's not enough. So I'm just throwing those out there. Whatever you guys think, there's several different things we could do that would be multipliers, that's all. I just wanted you to be aware. Well, for me, I think, you know, senior center um, feasibility study is like, I think for me, most important, but you do yeah. have to have other things on there. So, and I, I think I could agree with all of that, Carolyn. So I'm, I'm okay with, with most of that. I had that down and I had, um, just one other thing. So Dave, are you agreeing that we feel like the um, senior center building assessment thing, that's the number one, right? Do you feel like with that, yes. Dave? Yeah, okay. we've got to do something there. Um, yeah. And I think, so, are, yeah, that's so, so you know, let's, let's long overdue start. and we got to do something. Right, so let's just start. That's number one, okay, yep. Casey? So the senior shared services for senior centers, that's the number yes. one? No, 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 the building assessment shared, shared building assessment project. Feasibility study, right? Feasibility study. Yeah. What John, Wait, what John the wants needs us to do. The needs yeah, assessment what, and, building and building feasibility. Yes, yeah. what John wants us to do is the number one. Okay. Okay. So we've all agreed for that. Now we have to come up with some alternative. I mean, some like two, two and three kind of thing. So it's it's really up to you guys what you want to do because I mean, any of these things well, are really public, basic. For me, public health sharing would be number two, along with um, 
with uh let's see what was the other one was that that you know that pollinator thing i think you know if you're doing that is small money and and it's they'll probably do one and fill in a pollinator thing i don't think they'll just do one of these right or am i wrong about that do they only fund one thing no yes. no so it depends on how much interest they get from other towns right. as to where they're going to focus their money i got you so well the three towns doing the senior thing i think that's most important but i was thinking for small money and the other towns have been asked to do the same thing right that, I, that john asked you i do like the you know for one the shared nursing uh, nor, uh, public health is really important just based on this pandemic. The pu permanent public health nursing sharing arrangement yeah with in town. okay i think so well there's yeah right because there's explore sharing at local public health agent no uh but the um set up a permanent public health nursing sharing agreement. Yes, that's the one. Um, because, and, and you know, in, in line with that, just you know, like when we're unloading the tractor trailer truck full of needles, right? And whatever else we're bringing in, we're storing it in our church. Like we really need to think regionally, either South County or larger of a building where you take in this stuff and you store it because this won't be the last you know, maybe the last pandemic for 50 years, let's hope. Um, but there's always some other emergency that comes up that you need to, um, that you need to come together on. It's not like, I'm not talking first responders, like the ambulance shows up and the police and we have, you know, we have, um, what do you call it? Mutual aid. No, but, but you're like the food term. boxes, uh, you know, yes. we got, we got food boxes. So exactly. where are we putting the food boxes? You know, right. So when you have, you know, people displaced because of a tornado or any kind of thing that happens like that, there is no centralized location to store this stuff and then to, uh, to deploy from. And so volunteers come in, they get their tasks, they get their vests, they grab their stuff and they go, you know, um, I think regionally we need some place like that, whether it's a, a hangar or I'm not sure, but I think as, as we're dealing with this all year long, that's one of the things that has come up of having a shared place to store our emergency supplies, our emergency information, our printers, our ink, our cords for the flu vaccine, all the stuff that was like on the third floor in a dust pile because it was a mess. I mean, it's just, we really need to be organized, take care of our investment, um, have some good shelving put up, you know, I, I don't know if there's an addition that can be put on at the, at the EMS building or, you know, another small outbuilding there. Just those are my thoughts about really preparing for emergencies in the future because we're woefully unprepared as many. I mean, and we've done a lot. I mean, Carolyn's been working on this for years, but it's well, just, I mean, it's fun but, but we're moving it around from one. Yeah. Not, I mean, it's, the church is definitely an improvement from the senior center, but upstairs in the senior you know? center. But honestly, it is. It's really, I don't know. We need it's a hard. Local. It's hard to be prepared ahead of time when you don't have the proper storage places. Yeah, that's you really know, important. Whatever. But yep. we're going to yep. continue. I mean, just to let people know, if we have opportunities for grants, we are going to be putting you know buying stuff ahead of time like our masks and our gloves but you know we this stuff takes space and it does uh, and you do have to take yeah. care of it so that it's mm -hmm. usable by the time we want to yeah. use it and thank gosh we you know had quite a bit of you know cash that we were able to work into immediately because you know there really wasn't a much available when this whole thing started right and we have enough needles to do our own yes. population right now. So we don't have to worry about that at least. Okay. All so right. got uh, Dave, what are you thinking about for two? Well, I, I think the, well, the community nursing is really important because I go back to Ann Walker when she was doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, that was such an important asset to this town. Yep. And, you know, n not that Lisa does do an excellent job, but Anne was out in the public and stuff. And it, it really helped a lot, especially with our seniors. So I see if we can get, you know, whether it's South County or what, get somebody that's spending more hours. 
Well, my you know, thought is if we had, you know. if we had um, before, say, the four towns, you could have somebody working out of the EMS building. Mm -hmm. You could coordinate it with the EMS, like blood pressure clinics or, yeah. you know, whatever services. A lot of this stuff is going to, um, I mean, the pandemic stopped the integration, but there was this whole movement of having EMTs deliver some healthcare that yeah. kind of thing. So um, I, that's kind of still going to be the future. And it makes sense if we have somebody that's available for all our communities, because mm -hmm. all of us are spending money. There's no question we're spending mm -hmm. money. But are we going to get, we get more for our money. And it's absolutely nothing against Lisa. She's fantastic. Yeah. But, you know, we're just sharing her now with 18 towns. And it's, I'm, I'm you know, it's really tough to, you know, have her out in the community. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so, Dave, what I lost my connection. Oh. oh well, and here again, you know, um, you know, other than the community nursing, the, um, you know, obviously, some type of emergency response, whether it's through South County uh, Fire District or something, uh, we do have to set up something a little bit better than what we have. Yeah. Um, to get in case of emergencies, you know, the, the, the fire station, the shelter, uh, technically, uh, but, you know, it's just for the district. Um, but there isn't really a lot of disaster within the town of Deerfield. Yeah. And um, you know, those things that are... You know, Am I still here? Yes, um, the, I just wasn't clear what you wanted for the third choice, Dave. We were getting broken up there. Um, yeah, I, I don't know why, but my connection's going haywire here. Um, the, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, I think my phone's heating up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm losing it right now. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I've been on the phones since 7 a.m. I know. It's been a long day. Yeah. I, I'm starting to feel like Casey and um, Jen by the end of the day. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. No laughing. I know. We're not laughing. Okay. Um, so we we picked we picked the nursing and the, um, Dave. Would you have a problem if we did the pollinator thing and and because uh, that's that's got to be little money. And that program is already up and going at the FERCOG. But, um, but I wouldn't want to do that solely by itself because that's not a very much of a serve. I mean, it's wonderful if because they can work with uh, Frontier. But um, I also feel like we still have to keep chugging away at that um, Stillwater problem. So I kind of... Oh. I'm interested in the Deerfield River um, Recreation Study, yep. sort of, but I don't want to. I don't want to sign on for another study. I want to yeah. follow up to help us build the case for the bond bill. This is the whole purpose of this. Yeah. Before I forget my note, as you said, Stillwater. I wanted to follow up on the Stillwater Bridge. I don't want to let that go. Right. I mean, we had that fixed. Isn't that on? Wasn't that on? Yes, that's, um, I think it's 2022. Okay, well, it's not that far off, so it's next no. year. So I just want to um, just keep my eyes on actually, that. Actually, that reminds me, Casey, can you, they were supposed to change sorry. the design. I'm sorry, but this is just, you triggered something for me. They were supposed to change the design so that you would allow one-way traffic rather than close down the whole bridge. Mm -hmm. That was a huge concern from multiple people, not just me. But multiple people, because you know, if you, all of a sudden you don't have the Stillwater Bridge, I'm at the far end. So just you know, getting on five and ten is not, and coming down is not so serious. But if you're at the lower end of Upper Road or Lower Road, having to go all the way up to Greenfield and then all the way back down is really yeah, it was tough when the bridge was out. impact. So they were supposed to DOT was supposed to put it out to bid with the one-way traffic. In other words, they work on half the bridge 
and you can drive on the other half. So can you check that out? Where, where are they in the design process and make sure that that's one way design? Because I know Savage's, um, that was a huge problem. Mm -hmm. Savage's firm was very concerned and as well as people, the bus driving route, once we get back to school where people drive them on the buses again yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. I know Greenfield covered us a little bit there. Well, well, was yes, that and uh, we've, we've got to all sort out the fired thing and mm -hmm. if there isn't the ability to go on the bridge. So, um, sorry, Trevor, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, that was, I was just like, I thought of that and I was like, I just didn't want to forget where that was in the process. So that's all. Yeah. Just, notes on that when did it start because i don't know what you're talking about yeah i know when did the so well, can you offline tell me where it yeah, started yeah, trevor we'll and then you, i'll do some yeah, we'll catch you up on that offline yeah the main uh -huh. thing was that there was a number we finally got a, a number that stuck they went out to bid it became into the uh workflow they it's a town-owned bridge but the state's paying to upgrade it and repair it yeah that was also, a huge that was a 10 year effort on my part. I just want yeah. you to know I was a witch for 10 years on this. <laughs> and I went to multiple meetings. And I didn't want to get stuck with the multi-million dollar repair. No. So it panned out. Um, but we want to make sure that it's one way traffic yeah. always. Okay. Um, sorry, that was offline, but yeah. that actually was pretty important. And we haven't we haven't followed up on that for a while. Yeah, it's changed everything, so I just didn't yeah. want to talk about that. I have one question oh, as so we're talking about DLTA. So we, it was identified that we need to update our open space and recreation plan, which is an element that we get graded on every time we do applications for grants. She's right. Um, well, how about we do I that think we plus the pollinator thing then? And we'll just forget about the Stillwater Bridge. Uh, recreation thing because I'm afraid it's a study and we don't want to study. We what we want is continuation uh, to build for the bond bill to ask for money. So if I don't want an addition, I would have to, I would have to be involved in that to make sure it's not re repeating what's already been done. And mm -hmm. who 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 knows how much energy I have on that right now to tell you the truth. So let's let's go with. Casey's how about we agree with Casey? Open space, um, master plan update, and then sneak in the pollinator one, would you? Okay, so you want, do you want three to be a combination of OSRP and the pollinator? Yes. Your item I, mean, I do, I do, because the pollinator thing is a no brainer. It's a and great the, way to kind of add to your grant applications for like MVP and all that other stuff. Yeah. And the, and the, the park and the, the pollinator stuff we want to bring into there. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Well, we want to okay, work with so Frontier. This would that would be a huge thing with the Frontier curriculum. Yeah. That we're trying. This is what the next conference is next week on that. I'm I'm gonna get that soil health, health um, curriculum too. So we'll get we'll get two free curriculums. I hope out of this next week. You should sure. know that I talked to the. I actually asked this question a while ago about the OSRP, there's a cost to the town, <clears throat> excuse me, a cost to the town and a cost to the, to the COG. This would put us hopefully into a two year process. It, one year would be $20,000. Two years is a $10,000 bill a year. I'm afraid to say that to people and it can get shot down, but if we tell DLTA that we would like it um, and start to plan for it, then we have a better shot of getting it done within two years, but it still leaves us out in the cold for two years without that. But this isn't something that changes right away. It takes at least a year to do an update. Yes. I just want that to be okay. out there, so. Thank you. In the past, I've chaired it. And the second time that we did it, I had some help from the fur cog because it was just getting more and more complicated. And I have to tell you by now, it is so, I don't know all the qualifications for it, but it is really complicated to do it as a volunteer. And right. um, that's I, why I it's feel, important to get the COGS help. Yeah. I was just going to say, I feel like $10,000 is quite a lot two years in a row, but I, I honestly, there is a lot of shenanigans. It's like the hazardous mitigation plan that we yes. do. Yeah. You know, it's exactly what like, it's like. I've it's done both really, of them. 
right. You know, we were, we used to do it ourselves and I, and I myself did it, but I, I, I just, you know, the difference between the eighties, the nineties and the beginning of the two thousands. And now it's just night and day. It is a huge, much, it's a much different workload. It's a lot of different information that you have to pull together. And we don't necessarily as volunteers have those, that disciplinary knowledge. Well, it's mostly it just, is just as complicated. It's it. What it is is you're 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 going through and cutting and pasting, and I uh, and again, um, technology challenge. So the the cutting and pasting is actually more difficult for me than some of the other work, and um, I, but to have you you got to have somebody that's going to be able to do like a seventy page document, and I, even if we had a, a good clerical support, I think it would still be hard. You just, there's an outreach element to this that gets organized by your technical assistance person yeah. through DLTA. Yeah. And that's yeah, but important. to me, that's, that's the easy part. That's calling meetings. That's getting, you know, people to be involved. That's easy. And we can do that, but it's, it's the, you know, the cutting and pasting and, and meeting all the hoops that you got to drum through for the state, for the state to accept our plan. And that's some of the more difficult part. Okay. So I will put in the needs assessment and building feasibility for senior center as item one. Yes. Um, permanent public health nursing sharing agreement is item two. Yep. And then OSRP and the pollinator program. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. I did ask planning board if they had any comments. Um, I don't know if they send independently to the plan, if they send a note independently to the planning board, they actually did that when I was in Asheville, the COG did, because there was such a disconnect. The planning board was very independent there. So I did ask the planning board if they had, if they wanted to look at it, um, but there is a timeline on that. And I told them that um, some of these projects are just really in your wheelhouse, but I always tried to open it up for planning board because there are this planning zoning thing, I thought, but we've got a lot of support through Chris Curtis for that. So I didn't necessarily think that was something they'd be interested okay. in. Okay. All right. Um, so you're all set in that then, Casey, right? Yep. Okay. Moving on then, um, the next thing is resignations, appointments, and hires. Um, Kathy, I, I'm sure we did weeks. I, I, I thought know. we did it. I thought we did it. I, I, I know we were notified. I don't find any place on the agendas or in my notes where we accepted it. So um, yeah, but she's got to, she's got to resign to the town clerk. It's not us. She did. I think she did. This, oh, she this did. followed an email trail that Jennifer and I were trying to dig okay. through. Okay, but well, I, I don't see an acceptance. So if you wouldn't mind accepting it. No, absolutely clarify. not. I don't mind clarifying it at all. So I make a motion to accept Kathy Melnick's resignation from the 350th um, um, anniversary committee. Is, is there a second? Dave Wolf, I'm second. Thank you. Um, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Dave Wolf, I. Trevor, are you there? Sorry, sorry, I had to stay up, step away for a second. Um, what was that to accept the resignation? For yeah. um, Mel Kathy Melnick. Yes. Yep. Kathy Melnick. I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Carolyn Ness. Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda is the ZBA um, uh, alternate um, appointment. Did we get? We have four. We have Jennifer Remillard, um, Kippy Camosa, Michael Clean, and Mark Brennan. Was there anybody else yes. that was interested? That's all I have. Okay. I think Mark Brennan is interested in the planning board, so he cannot be on both boards. So right. I would just like to take him off that list. Um, and I'm very, there are no women on the zoning board right now. So, um, and Kathy, um, you know, Felton. did resign. Felton did resign. So um, I would like to appoint Jennifer Remillard to the zoning board as an alternate as an alternate yes this is to fill david potter's position because we bumped david potter up in kathy's position 
to full time. And so that would mean filling the term that David Potter has as an alternate, correct? Yes, yes. Because Barbara asked me that question. It's, it's to fill, I, I don't know, um, I can't remember when Dave Potter's ex term expires. Was it this Barbara June? Barbara knows. Next, was it this June or next June? I thought it was this June, but I will ask Barbara. If I just okay. say for the term of David Potter, if we just add that that friendly amendment that to whatever motion would come up to okay. fill the, the term left by the movement of Potter from an alternate to a regular member, that would right. satisfy it. Yes, Anna Lee. Why would that be the case in that situation, but not in the case for the appointment for the planning board, the new planning board position? Planning board's elected. Because it's an elected position, Anna Lee. You can only, the select board appoints to fill the space between the resignation and the next election for the planning board. Zoning board is an appointed committee, but we try to keep staggered dates for them. So we just try to keep those dates staggered. Understood. Thank you. Tim, did you have a question? Uh, no, I just wanted to say, according to the town website, um, that um, Kathy Felton is up on June 30th of 2021, and David Potter ran through 2023. Oh, okay. well, I'll ask Barbara to confirm the term, but tell her it's for the term. Oh, That's David what I Potter's, want to be clear about. David yep. Potter's okay. term. Okay. Let's just do it David Potter's term and that way it's not in question. Okay. Do I have a second? Thank you, Tim. Well, oh, oh, before we before we move on, did, was there any other, there was no other submissions, right, Casey? So far as I know, I checked my email again this afternoon and okay. I had a couple things come up for planning board, but I did not see anything for zoning board. Okay. Do I have a second? Trevor or Dave? Um, I'm reading at the uh, moment. Okay. I'm just not familiar with her. I, I know. That's... Jennifer, do you want to just talk about um, yourself sure. a little bit? Um, I did submit that you should have some information in the packet and the email that you have. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, I have a master's in business administration with a focus in entrepreneurial um, thinking and innovative practices. Um, I also have a degree in psych, a bachelor's in psychology, associates in legal studies. Um, and during my, um, my career, I have worked um, with um, property. I, I've worked, excuse me, in the legal field, uh, working with tax title foreclosure. I've worked with um, different plannings, uh, town communities, mostly with Chicopee at that point in time, um, you know, for the firm that I worked for. Um, I understand the MGL statutes and I, you know, I'm familiar with how to interpret. Um, in having my degree with psychology, I've been able to uh, understand perspectives from opposing sides and try to um, see how they would best fit certain si situations. Um, for over seven years, I did mostly human service work where um, I was a case manager and I had to deal with people in high stress situations. Um, and I feel you know, that would be a really good excuse me, I'm a little tired today. Um, it would be a really good asset or characteristic to have on the zoning board, um, you know, or any, you know, public community um, position, whether, you know, employed or voluntary or appointed. Um, I'm currently on the 350th steering committee. I'm a member of the historical commission. Um, I also am involved in um, different fundraising within the community to try to um, raise funds for the 350th event. Um, I also have experience in uh, community networking. Um, I am an original co-founder of, uh, a, non, of a nonprofit kind of a resource um, 
organization called the Voice Veterans Outreach um, Integrative Community Enterprise. Um, I worked a lot with veterans, military family members, and community members to try to provide support in that. Um, also my ties to the community, while I've only been here since 2014, my family history goes back to um, the late 1600s. I'm a descendant of the Stebbins family and the Course family. Um, and I'm really, you know, really dedicated to seeing um, Deerfield move forward in a very positive way in our community. I think it's important, um, not just for our, you know, our older folks, but for our younger folks who are growing up and coming, you know, within to the community and what, you know, what they have um, moving forward. I have to say she's wonderful on the, any committees that we've had meetings with and she's really good, very focused, very um, civil and um, Okay. Um, Always well, you know, my only concern to anybody that we put on either the zoning or the ZBA is that, you know, the town of Deerfield has got to look at commercial and industrial growth to stabilize our tax base. So, and, you know, I just want to make sure people really look at that. I've, I've seen a lot of different growth within our community. I see a lot of vacant buildings, though. I see a lot of need for attracting new business, um, as well as, you know, investing in, in the businesses we currently have. Um, that's how you attract more. Um, I was uh, on the board of for the, I was a secretary on the Ward 3 Neighborhood Association in Northampton, which encompasses a good portion of downtown Northampton. Um, and, you know, we focused on the different um, ways to, you know, build up our community when I was there. And I was in Northampton probably for over 15 years and really involved with that. And that was during a good portion when Northampton was thriving. Now, obviously I know that Deerfield is a totally different style of town um, where I've heard, you know, both sides of the coin where people want to see a lot of agricultural structure continue, which I think our community has done a great job in transitioning from certain types of agriculture to, you know, more um, with the vegetation at this point versus, you know, meat. Um, and I've seen how you've repurposed the pickle factory. Um, my husband's worked in this community for more than 20 years uh, at Covestro, which is currently Covestro now, but started off as Deerfield Urethane. Um, so I've, you know, I've seen it from an employee perspective as well. Um, and I think there's a lot of opportunity for growth here, but there's, you know, the growth has to be cohesive um, with what area things go into. Um, and I think there's a lot of opportunity for growth in Deerfield. And, and I understand where you're coming from um, with the shoring up the tax base in the community, because right. I know, you know, a lot of the property land, um, you know, you have a lot of nonprofit with the, with this, with the schools. And, you know, you do have Yankee Candle as one of your largest uh, bases, but, you know, we, you now have like uh, Treehouse Brewing coming into the community. Um, and there's a lot of opportunity um, along, you know, the five and 10 area to build up. Um, I don't want to speak to uh, any opinions on Dollar General because I would, you know, that's not something I would give an opinion to anyways at this point as and, an alternate. And I wouldn't be asking that anyways. So it's just, you know. Oh, I'm just, I'm, I'm just I'm, saying like, I, I don't want you to feel like I'm, you know, joining for any specific reason. I just feel like there's a lot of potential in our community. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm in my mid forties and now? I'd like to live here for a long time and see things go, you know, well forward. Yep. And I, 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 we need balance. Yes. Yeah, I would ask, um, you know, any applicant to, uh, my, my expertise is not land use and zoning. I just, 
I'm learning a lot more as the years go on uh, being in, in town government, but um, you know, you, there's a lot of uh, experience that comes from just listening to people and understanding what the, what the bylaws are of the town. Um, and I would ask any app, you know, person that is serving on our boards um, to really, you know, think about the, the human aspect of it and the people that are applying for things or not applying for things and um, be careful about setting precedent, you know, of, of, of different things. Um, but I agree with David immensely. I, you know, just again, being in, in government for the last five years or so, understanding the really precarious balance we have with our residential tax base and our, our industrial and business tax base. Um, it's, it's extremely important to me to attract and take care of our businesses, um, you know, and demand good respect back in the, uh, you know, it's, it's a partnership. So um, it needs to be handled um, as a partnership. We're here to help each other uh, succeed. If, you know, Deerfield's a good place to have a business, um, uh, then, then we, you know, then we want to help them do that. And it, it only benefits all of us. And then when it comes to, you know, residents as well, if they're looking to get, you know, some sort of variance on their property, an addition of this and that, just to take a very measured look at, you know, what the needs are of the people and, and um, understand uh, that we we're here to work with people and not just, um, we just really want to help our residents and help the businesses that come here and, and be a, um, an, um, an agent of change and an agent of, of helping, helping people to do the work and to listen well and to follow, um, follow the law and understand that, you know, there may be disagreements in how different people see a specific item, but if you treat each other with respect and kindness and know that each one is coming at it, not with any malice, but just from their own understanding, um, you know, that's, that's the most you can ask. I mean, people will learn, you'll learn if, if, you know, you're appointed to this board and, um, I just hope people keep an open mind about that. So. Yeah. I, I have to say that, you know, um, I do not know everything and I know there is a lot to learn, mm -hmm. um, and a lot to, to hear. So being an active listener yeah. is really a key thing I think and, is really important when joining any Board. Yeah, and you strike me as somebody who uh, has a has a, a craving to learn, you know, and is not afraid to understand and go to trainings. And I, I can't tell you how much I would support any training you want. Um, the town really cares about our boards, knowing that the change. I mean, we have a packet in here tonight about the massive sweeping zoning changes from the governor um, that just came out with a new, you know, a new bill. And I think Casey will talk about that in a little bit. But it's a piece in our thing about. Um, you know, and so just understanding how much zoning changes uh, at the drop of a hat, um, you know, just always learning, always trying to learn. So, um, so I'll offer a second to that, Carolyn. Okay. Is there any further discussion or any questions? Any more questions? Okay. Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. Hi, Carolyn Ness. Thank you. Um, we have- Thank you, Jennifer. Um, thank you, Jennifer, yes. Thank um, you. Uh, thank you for hanging in there. Um, no problem. It's a, but, you know, it's important to know who you're appointing. So I understand yeah. David's well, question. Well, thank you. Thank you for answering it. questions. Um, I do appreciate all the work you do. Um, Casey, from, the, from our packet, um, Lynn Rose and um, Alan Sweetland and uh, Kareen Douglas were going to be reappointed. Was that what you had? Actually, right now, I only have confirmation from Lynn Rose. Corinne and Alan never got back to me. So oh, I would okay. ask if you're going to do an appointment for Open Space and Rec Committee, she would be the first one. And she's offered to help me find some more people. We need some buy-in from some other committees as well. Okay, so I guess let's start out with Lynn Rose and then and she had a couple other people in mind. Um, I know John Pachork was um, thinking of a couple people. Could you touch base with John as well on this? Yep. Um, so uh, I'll make a motion to appoint Lynn Rose or reappoint. Is, is her term actually up right now? 
I don't think the committee's been active. Oh, okay. So, so we're appointing them. Point. Okay, so so we're appointing to reactivate this committee. We are appointing yeah. Lynn Rose um, to the Open Space and Rec Committee. I'll second. I'll second. Go ahead, David. Yep. Okay. Is there any more? Um, is there any more discussion on this? Um, no. Okay. Hearing well, none. Um, would um, oh. work with. Uh, you know, provided we get an open space master plan kind of thing going on, Lynn would. Oh, Lynn, Lynn has been on the previous committees. Great. Yeah. Uh, actually, then... she was, she actually, she was, uh, I think on both committees with me. The master. All, all and... three. Yeah, no, because see the open space is only a five-year plan and we were on, I did it for three times. Um, and I think she was on each time. So she's actually experienced on this. Mm -hmm. So she wouldn't have any problems with this, right, Casey? I don't. Th I think she. That's one of the reasons she was interested. Is um, the email no. got out to her, and she yeah. was interested because she was familiar with it. Okay. Right. Okay. The only thing I don't remember is: is this a one-year term committee? Usually, it is. I think it is. I think it's an annual appointment because yeah. it's one. Okay. It's a. It's a minor sub. It's. I don't want. No, it's not a minor committee. But it doesn't have. It doesn't have, committee, right? it doesn't yeah, have a, a consistent charge. Right. right. It's not always right. consistently open. Right. It's, and working. It's, uh, they mostly what they do is they participate in the hazardous mitigation plan, and we and then the renewal of the open space plan. So that's basically what their um, charge is, and that's why it's like an on and off committee, mm -hmm. as far as you know whether they're active or not. Okay. Do you want to do the term for a year and a little more to get to June 30th of 2022, or do you just want to do a term that would we would then renew as of July 1st this year? No, no, it's because it's a, such a hassle. Let's let's do it to June 30th of 22. Yeah. Okay. Is that all right with you, yeah, Dave? No, that makes sense. That makes sense. If you guys yeah. will serve the term. Okay. Yeah. Yep. All right. So yeah, we'll, I'm we'll, fine with that. I'm sure Lynn, Lynn is really, she doesn't mind working. So she probably get together, start, you know, organizing this committee. So I, I, I want to go through to June of 2022. Okay. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. Hi, Carolyn Ness. Thank you. Um, there was, that was it for recommendations, right? Yes. I mean, okay. Um, I guess the only other announcement before we get into the mail is um, that June 30th, I mean, January 30th, nine o'clock, uh, Deerfield Naturals has a Zoom meeting. Yes. yes. You know, they that's have a, a Zoom Saturday? meeting. That's yes. a Saturday? It's a, okay. Yeah, it's an outreach meeting. This is to comply with the uh, Cannabis Control Commission's requirements and the regulations, the statutory regulations. They have to hold an outreach meeting. Normally, they would try to use a public space, and they asked us if they could use the town hall, and we're closed because of COVID. So we offered to allow them to use the Zoom platform, and how that works is Jennifer would start the meeting, hand over co-hosting duties to the person from Deerfield Naturals, and they have that meeting for the period of, I think it's two hours in the notice, right? 10 to 2, 10 to 12? I think you're right. Whatever the period of that meeting is, it starts at 10 on Saturday. Um, okay. And it provides the same access as we would provide if it was the town hall, essentially. Okay. I, um, all right. And then, uh, then we want, did we want to talk about the compensation review for the police department? That was a $3,000. So that's a contract. It's an item unanticipated. I talked to the personnel board on Monday about this. So okay. there's an element that, a, a basic compensation study doesn't normally take into account, and that's fringe. Um, so when we when we created the contract for our classification compensation plan, we didn't include the fringe because in a basic plan you don't normally do that. I had a conversation with John Pachurik, and then um, had talked to Mary Accardi, who's the consultant, and we had a short discussion when she gave an update to the personnel board about what the process is for this class comp, and 
basically the two of us identified that it's probably a good idea if we did it. We have the money to do it and it will help both the police department but all the other employees with that $3,000 cost to better be able to evaluate how how we're paying people because compensation isn't just your pay rate. Mm -hmm. It's benefits that play into that. But if the town, is, it, it, the fringe could also help us determine policies moving forward that might identify places we could be better for our employees that are not necessarily in a number, but show some regard for the position that an employee holds. So I'm, I'm asking the board to approve it and ask and allow me to, to sign it, authorize it and allow me to sign it so we can move forward with that. And you have the funds in what contracted services? We do, okay. contracted services, yes. I think it's important to do, I mean, I-, I Trevor yeah. sat and listened to the conversation so you can talk. Yeah, no, I was I was involved. I went to the, the personnel committee and listened to the whole conversation. And I do think it's it is important because your pay is rate is one thing. And it was fascinating to kind of see the initial data and we'll hammer out more of that. But it, there's definitely uh, something to be said to understand what you know, what the insurances are. You know, somebody we may pay less, but we offer more of another benefit and that would attract people here or not attract people here. It's really kind of helping us to study you know, why we always have to hire midway up the scale versus kind of at the beginning and, you know, what other, what other benefits. How does, how does this, um, how does this fit into the timeline with all the other, the other studies, Casey? It's, it's actually, we're get we have the raw data for some of the salary stuff. There was a couple questions that John had that Mary was chasing down and then personnel board asked a couple questions. She's going to chase down as well. Um, or during the personnel board meeting, um, a question, actually Trevor posed it, about adding a certain community. Mm -hmm. um, we have some information, but one thing that we have to keep in mind is, you know, when we're doing these evaluations, there's gonna be highs and lows that we have to mitigate in evaluating the data. So some of the raw data looks a certain way, but once you start taking into account something like Greenfield or Northampton, you might want to drop those. So yeah. in terms of coming up with the, the information, we should have a preliminary report by the middle of February that personnel board um, is going to see. And then you guys will see it once we, once we narrow down any of the questions personnel board has, it'll help you guys when you look at it. Um, yeah. So the idea is we would try to get this ready into our budget final budget numbers so that we could move forward with any increases if it's not a, he a heavy lift and the raw data says it might not be but there's some outliers that we need to review in terms of position that i saw when we were talking it through with mary so i think we're on track she said we're on track right trevor <laughs> Um, Dave, uh, Dave, did you have any questions on this? Here. No, no. It's. Uh, I think I agree with with the study, and uh, because you know, as a town, we've got to make sure that you know we can retain our good employees. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay. Um, did, did you? Uh, so I'll make a motion to support this. Um, do you have a second? Yes, I'll second that to to allow Casey to sign the uh, contract. Oh yes, I'll uh, authorize Casey to sign the contract. Um, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Trevor McDaniel. Dave Wolfram. Aye. Carolyn Ness. Aye. Um, Casey, then are we ready to go into um, executive session? There's just one thing I wanted to bring to your attention, and. If I forget something, Trevor, yell at me. Um, the community one-stop for growth portal I mentioned yes. earlier. Um, I sent you the notification the DLS slash DOR sent to us. You might take a look at it. The thing I was gonna let everybody know is they have a schedule of webinars that they're doing. There's one tomorrow and there's two next week. I thought it might be useful if you guys can find some time. They're gonna tape them. Um, if you could find some time 
there they'll push them up through the portal so there's a website link in the email that i sent they'll push their trainings up through the portal so you could go back and watch them later i think it's interesting to see this could play out in the conversation you had earlier today mm -hmm. um i just want you to be aware that the elements we're talking about are rural development housing choice downtown initiative brownfield site readiness urban agenda uh, mass work so there's a lot of grant elements here um i, I want us to make sure this out last week i mm -hmm. want to make sure that um you uh just look at the mass works um, application and see if there's anything that fits in, um, you know, Kevin may, okay. may have something in mind. Do you want me to take a look at MassWorks? What's available through MassWorks? Yeah. What does it look like this year? The element that I think is interesting in this, they ask you for a letter of intent, which is what uh, Chris had mentioned earlier. And they help you go through your they actually go through your application and give you feedback on how you can make this work with it's an interagency collaborative though. So it's across like six agencies. They've yeah, never done also, this before. Yeah. But also Casey, it's just the reason why they're doing a letter of interest is because there's more competition. Yes, you're right. Don't, don't, no. don't sugarcoat it. Hmm. They want to know who they want to pay, pay their grants right. out to. I get it. Okay. I know they um, just are looking at the field and then they, whatever. And things are much more competitive than they used to be. Yes. That's, that's the issue. Um, but there are some advantages. If you have an element that is, it is really good, then um, you can get some support, but. Especially if it doesn't system. play well in the sandbox with other grants. That's the one thing that us as town administrators have been complaining about for quite a while is, some grants you can't piggyback with, or they don't have a way to intersect with other programs that might be an element within the project. So that's the reason that I thought it was interesting. The other problem is, is there's not a lot of capacity in the office to do grants. On the other hand, I know we need, and I said this to Trevor earlier, I know we have to pull together some of this complete streets, town common, those elements that you want to see in South Deerfield, we need to bring that together. And I think this, at least figuring out whether this is an avenue would be useful. So I thought well, if you guys had um, a better idea reason, of what it was like. Well, the reason why I was interested in the Mass Works one is because we could use this as an economic multiplier with Berkshire Brewing and the Leary lot. And um, if we could fund the whole Leary lot from um, doing uh, impervious I mean, pervious um, pavers and greenscaping and, you know, access to expanding Berkshire Brewing, you know, uh, you know, garden there, garden, whatever they call yep. it, beer garden yep. kind of thing. Um, and potentially, you know, work with um, Leader Lumber for something there too, I, I think, there's huge potential, but you'd have to look if there was any extra credit for as an economic um, multiplier for um, Berkshire Brewing, the credit for Berkshire okay. Brewing or whatever um, Leader Lumber might be doing. Because remember, we're if we're getting Treehouse, that's gonna be a multiplier. Treehouse is coming, that's gonna be an economic multiplier. Can, can we somehow work with Berkshire Brewing and this Mass Works and, and, and uh, Complete Streets it, coordinate. So just look if there's any credit for any kind of economic, re there should be, there should be. I think there is, yeah, um, I think there is. So what, how do we do the narrative for Berkshire Brew that would be the multiplier that we could hinge on um, Treehouse as well? And okay. whatever. Okay, I mean, there, right. there's a whole bunch of craft brewers that we could maybe pull together. And, you know, if we had the parking and downtown development, we could maybe work with Miller's Falls and Element Brewing or who, you know, we could figure out another community that we can submit for and be a multiplier on that as well. So okay. we just need to be creative 
um, and maybe we could figure something out that would pay for the Leary lot and part of complete streets, but would be also a, a huge economic multiplier for, you know, craft beer tours or something like that. I mean, it'll, you right. know what I'm saying, along those lines, yeah. not, I mean, we have to think about it obviously, but try to try to sort that out, okay? Okay, thank you. So- All right, I, I think I, we're there. All right, one last item would be just to kind of bring everybody's attention that the FY22 governor's cherry sheets came out today. Yes, the so, governor's cherry sheets came out today. Thank you, Trevor. Welcome. Um, I haven't, I actually have, was in meetings all day. So, yep. so what's this, so, does anyone have the bottom line here? Well, looking at like say frontier, um, you know, regional transportation went way down so from 323, 328,000 to 245,000. Oh my uh, God, that's gross. It's huge. Uh, charter tuition reimbursement did go up about 60,000. Um, Let's see, school choice sending tuition is even. Um, charter school sending tuition is up a bit. Um, so, you know, all in all, we're down, you know, um, about 90,000 from last year. So we keep dropping, is all. Sort of. um, for for, front, for uh, Deerfield, we're, we're up just a little bit. So, good. Now, we haven't heard back from Lisa, have we? On the um... no, we didn't set that up yet. Okay, so is the governor's budget based on the old school formula or the new school formula? I'm assuming if it's not, I think now, it's based on the new school formula. No, I think that's what they said. So if it was, if we get the waiver, we're going to get additional money. I don't know. I'm going to check. Oh, just, just Wheelie's got check. her hand up. <laughs> Before oh, sorry. we go. Sorry, Lily, I can't um, tell that you had a question. Okay, go ahead, Lily. Hi. Um, yeah, thank you guys. Um <clears throat> senior housing, me again. Uh no, I'm glad you're bringing it up. We're we're trying <laughs> to do everything we can. All right. So um we posted on the town, I was notified that it was posted on the town's Facebook page, and it has been crickets. So um are you guys comfortable tonight link posted in Deerfield now? Yes. There's a lot more people there. Yeah, sorry. Link it. Link it to uh, the town one. Yeah. Oh, Trevor will post it for you. Trevor will post it for post you. Send it. It no, you can post it. You're on there, right? Yeah, I'm on there. So, I mean, I, I just wanted to, when I had asked before, you got you all asked me to start with yes, the, the town's town. Facebook page yeah. and, and that um, Casey and or Jennifer vetted the language and everything. So I was just yeah. saying, we just That's did perfect. the exact same thing, right. put it up um, with yeah. no hint of desperation or anything. <laughs> posting. No, it's good. Slide. So we are going to do it, Lily. Well, <laughs> it, it may be you and me, Carol, and then there's a lot, a lot of work to get this done right. But actually, you guys are going to go get more information, hopefully at state level. So maybe mm -hmm. that will, but if I, it it'll be good. I've had people say I'm really interested, but I just oh, I no, don't no. have the time, and that's the problem with land. I know. Mm -hmm. we, we've yeah. got to get, keep moving ahead. Yeah. Um, also, okay. So Casey, the is there anything in that portal thing that is related to senior housing at all? That could buy any. I don't I, know yet. I haven't been able to dig into the okay. whole thing, but I could I, certainly um, check really, and see. There's there's various things there. I have to tell you that whole portal thing, it started freaking me out. So I just skimmed over it. So if Casey can look at it, I, I, I will try to get involved. In but I will say, you know, I will share one update. Um, I've been working with the chief and, and um, the other people on the senior center committee because we wanted to begin by looking and seeing if, if there was synchronicity and value in um, in the surveys and things like that, but it became very clear at our last meeting that um, it, it doesn't make sense to force couple them. The thing to do for the senior center is to begin finding out what services people in the town need and um, to look at, should we have a community center 
um, and senior center and that kind of stuff. And then if out of that it becomes apparent we could maybe build something that has senior apartments on, on another floor or something like that, that would be just a win. But it, it the, the needs of the different um, constituencies are very different for senior center, senior housing, especially because senior center maybe will end up being a community center depending on what gets learned. So we just wanted to update you guys on that. I had that question. Thank you. Oh, well, good. <laughs> I'm glad I could answer something. All right. I think that's it for me. I will uh, help post in Deerfield now and see what happens. And we'll cross our fingers, Lily. So do you want me, do you, oh, Kevin's busy. Uh, I can, well, when she's done, I'll make a motion to go into executive session, I think, right? Yes, and what I would say is you, <clears throat> you guys just have to decide as you're making in the motion, you should just tell them whether you're going to go back out. No, we're not coming back out. <laughs> go yeah, back. I know, we're tired. No, I have not reviewed all of the governor's budget, but Trevor, correct me if I'm wrong. He did say, or Lieutenant Governor Polito said that they were moving forward with the Student Opportunity Act. Maybe yeah. that's what I'm confusing yeah. with school aid. Yep. Okay, so Carolyn, that's what I was confusing. The Student Opportunity Act versus school aid calculations. I confused the two of them. I just asked Trevor okay. if I was I, I just, we got to be careful that we're, we're keeping on this waiver business because at some point it's going to hit us. And, and I mean, for us to come up with $300,000 or whatever, I mean, it's bad enough. Frontier, if it's down 90, that's 45 down for us. But you know, if the elementary school takes a, a huge hit, uh, I mean, that this is the wrong time to be helping, uh, you know, looking for extra money. Right. And budgets, oh. we, we see budgets going up. Some of them are costs we can't really control. I know, um, I know. But we that's have a few, we have some, so I'm worried I, about the school too. Well, and, and it wouldn't be anything the school's fault. It's, you know, this is the state just support funny. of it. So. We just got to make sure that we're staying on top of Lisa and and, and making sure we, she has everything that she needs, and then also the calculations. If you know, how are they calculating our money? Okay. Okay. So yeah, I'll make a motion to go into executive session. May I do that? And not come out. That's correct. We are we are adjourning from executive session. We'll not be coming back to open session. We thank you all for joining us tonight. Um, so pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, the Select Board may enter into executive session to conduct strategy with respect to collective bargaining or for litigation with EBI consulting as an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigation position of the town and the chair so declares. Does the chair declare? I so do declare. <laughs> Very much. So uh, we'll invite in Casey Warren and, and uh, Chris Curtis and Chris Christopher Curtis, and we bid you all good night. So I'll thank make you, everyone. Do we have a second on that motion? Oh, oh uh, Dave will second. From second. Thank, thank you. you, Dave. And the roll call vote to go in. I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Dave Wolfram. I, Carolyn Ness. Thank, thank you, everyone. And thank you, everyone. Please keep continue wearing your masks and um, be safe. <laughs>